Welcome everybody to Adrift in Aldalor, our weekly actual play D&D game set in our homebrew world of Aradun. Um, <clears throat> our music is licensed through uh, musicbed.com and our ambiance is provided by Sirenscape and sometimes tabletop audio. And we translate all of that to everyone through uh, Bardly, a really great service uh, if you're playing remotely to share music with your friends while you play. Um, I'm going to turn things over to Shannon to tell us stuff. What kind of stuff? What kind of stuff am I uh, supposed to be talking about, Sean? Uh, what, what, what do I do? I what know. are we talking about? I don't, I don't know. know. You have, do you have a, a, a piece don't of paper? Don't I have a bit? A, a bit that I do? It's a piece of digital paper. Does well, then count? read that. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. I'm going to read that. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to Paradise. If you're new here, welcome. Special welcome to you. We're very excited to have you. Um, I'm going to talk about our partners, our stream partners, starting with Arcane Spectacles. Get a personalized touch for your home with Arcane Spectacles Christmas ornaments that are not just good for Christmas. They're good for all year round. I have, I need to take them down. I have two of them, three of them, two of them, two of them up here on my streaming station. I need to remember to take them down so I can show you because I promise they're there. They are customizable with party members and DMs names. These ornaments are perfect for your TTRPG and D&D fans. Durable and lasting, they'll be a cherished reminder of your adventures. Visit them now at arcanespectacles.com and add magic to your home all year long. Next, we have uh, Underground Oracle Publishing. They are a best-selling, any nominated TTRPG publisher building new and exciting settings for the cipher system of every genre that you can imagine. Each setting includes everything you need to explore its unique world, including lore, species, descriptors, foci, creatures, ciphers, artifacts, and all of the rules that you need to play. Their current focus is Harrow, the Blighted Plane, a crystal punk fantasy setting. Blah, 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 blah. I always read this wrong. A crystal punk fantasy setting filled with fungal oases, massive sand seas, and long buried magitech. For as little as $3, you can join their Patreon and help shape Harrow and each of the worlds that they create. So if you haven't checked them out on Patreon or Discord, do it. They're fabulous. Next, we have Edward York. He is our uh, official artist, our character artist. Uh, we have a brand new offline screen that shows it's you obviously can't see it right now because we're <laughs> live, but uh, the all of our current art, our new art for our characters. Uh, oh, it's also it'll be you'll see it in a second on our scrolling panels. I forgot that those are those exist. You'll see it in a second. All of our character art. He's an illustrator based in the UK who makes art for games and books to visit her to visit his portfolio and get in contact with him visit eork.com oh he's so talented so so much cool art go support him uh our last supporter right now is 1985 games they create affordable accessible high quality accessories for accessories that's not a word accessories for D D and other tabletop role-playing games our fabulous dm uses their npc cards to help create lasting memorable in-depth npcs for us to interact with um and they're they're pretty really great so go check out those cards and um all of their other incredible wares and you can use the code paradise prod p-a-r-a-d-i-c-e-p-r-o-d for 10 percent off your entire order um, I forgot to change this last week. Our campaign one backlog is up to date. You can now watch all of campaign one on YouTube. Uh, we also have short one pager recaps on our discord uh, for all of campaign one. If you'd rather read a, how many pages did we say it was like a hundred page book? You're muted. <laughs> It's it's like 100 pages, yeah. Cause some yeah, of them are like two pagers. Page Early on, I was doing yeah. two pagers, but mm. second half is all one pagers. We all had 83 pages. episodes, so there's probably around yeah. close to 90 to 100. Yeah. At some point, we want to like condense that and like release it as like an actual like thing. So we'll do that at some point. <laughs> um, but yeah, join us on Discord. And if you are interested in sponsoring an episode or two of Adrift in Aldolor, you can shoot us an email at paradiserpg at gmail.com. And last but not least, join us in paradise, not only here on Twitch, but on Twitter, YouTube, Discord, Instagram, and TikTok. We'd love to have you. And I'm very excited for tonight's episode, so let's not delay any longer. My dude, my dudes, let's do it. 
All right, let's do it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got to bring all these other people in. <laughs> meet the rest of them. What people? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The goobers. My, the, the, goobers the rest yeah, of the goobers. Yeah. Welcome, these, goobers. These, here's Call the me, goobers. Uh, here's the rest of the goobers. Mr. Goobers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's jump into our recap. Last we left off, our companions gathered in the Cask and Crow Tavern to debrief before the arrival of Mr. Sigal. Their contact at the Hyven Academy through Septimus's neighbor, Dilvana. The party played a few hands of cards, a game called Jack's Rabbit, that we all made up on the spot. But they all have known how to play it for years, though in different ways. They played these cards while waiting for Fearn to join them. Somewhere else, alone in the Widow's Ward, Fearn questioned some workers. He tried to intimidate one of them into giving him answers about Mr. Greaves, but the man seemed to not know much. Fearn left them with the message that he wanted to resolve the bad blood between the trio and Mr. Greaves peacefully. He then walked home the long way through the rain to join his friend. Soon enough, after they'd all reunited and talked briefly about their different uh, to-do lists, Mr. Sigal, a soft-spoken man, garbed in elementally-themed clothes, joined them with Dilvana in a private booth at the tavern. You exchanged information and in some of the elemental contraband for gold and silver with promises of more business to come. Sigil provided you with access to the Admiralty Court, the upper-class district that uh, is not so easy to get into without credentials, as well as the Hyven Academy Library, where he works as the head librarian. In order to meet with him more regularly once you've secured a partnership, he answered some questions here and there about... Uh, uh, the Aradunai, the use of elementals to power uh, electricity in different structures, as well as a little bit about storm elementals. But he maintained an arm's length distance from you until you learned to trust each other more and become friends instead of strangers. So he took the raccoons, and you all said your farewells for now. Furthermore, Dilvana, on behalf of Sigil, will repair the broken talisman found with the raccoon shaman for Fearn. The party then made plans for what to do on the morrow. You decided to scope out Captain Hastings' apartment during the day, with plans to investigate at night, all the while keeping an eye out for Mr. Greaves' agents. The apartment is in the Lighthouse District, which is right next to the Widow's Ward. With a plan settled, you rested for the night with food and drink. Though Sass found herself kicked out at the end of the night for trying to freeload in the dining area. So, she made her way to a crowded hostel close to the water, where the drunken sailor's snores mingled with the waves to lull her to sleep. The next day, you met back up at the Cask and Crow, and then went out to outfit Bruce and Septimus with armor, uh, as they were looking a bit scrappy and vulnerable to the to Jacquette. <clears throat> and then you decided to make your way to the Lighthouse District, to Beacon Street. Along the way towards the entrance to the district, a gang of city urchins taunted you uh, with one of the children trying to, ev trying to become friends with Bruce, ultimately, before his big sister came and pulled her, him away. But the kids fell back as you went deeper into the half-ruined district. And this is where we left off on the ninth day of Maravala, the forest dawn, on a tear's dog. So, <clears throat> the streets that you've entered are very um, quiet. There are little to no people uh, moving about. Um, you see maybe uh, a few people on porches or balconies um but again like i said last week the left side of beacon street is all all apartment buildings that are still there on the right side of beacon street are ruins of apartment buildings that were crushed by the lighthouse collapsing into the district after the great storm of last year so there may be people living in those spaces in tents or makeshift homes but for the most part it is uh, an inhospitable part 
of the streets. Uh, you never know where you're going to get stuck or where a building might collapse uh, in the right-hand side. So uh, for the most part, this district is fairly abandoned, save those who maintain their apartments on the left side of Beacon Street. Um, you uh, have uh, walked in. You can see Beacon Street leads upwards, uh, sort of like a causeway. Um, as this part of town ascends towards the rock where the lighthouse once stood, where even on that rock you can see a spiraled road going around it that leads up to the ruined foundations of the lighthouse, with some small shops here and there, or what were small shops here and there built into the rock itself um, to sell to tourists on their way up to see the big lighthouse. Um, but now it's basically a ghost town. Um... <clears throat> What would you all like to do? Uh, what's the first house on the left? What number is it? Uh, the first house on the left uh, uh, it would be, uh, let's see, because it's the, uh, it would be the first structure would be the first. It would just be one. Uh -huh. uh, one. Uh, so Jacquette will walk 29 houses down on the left mm -hmm. uh, until he finds 29 Beacon Street. Okay. Uh, are you guys still doing your nope. staggered approach? Or yeah, I should. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the front it... with... Uh... Yeah, it was a trio up front, right? Yep, it was a trio yep. up front, and then our... Trouble making trio and the... Farm boys. Two. Well, city boy and farm boys. Farm boys! I like that. The simple folk. Um, Even though they are both not simple at all and very complicated. And the characters. smartest members of the party. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, Fearn and Sass, are you doing anything or just following along with, with uh, Jacquette as he counts the houses? Uh, um, I... Oh. <laughs> Um, I'll still be keeping an eye out, um, just to see if, if anybody's, like, if, if the kids followed us or if there's anybody else following us. Okay, give me a perception check. You got it, Wes. Ooh, 21. 21, okay. Um, I think, uh, while she's checking our back, I'll be looking ahead of us to see if there's any, like, suspicious things. You give me a perception check as well. Uh, for everyone's reference, this is um, uh, there's a road in the middle here that is um, roughly the size of uh, the roughly a size that can fit a uh, a wagon, um, probably uh, ten feet across. And then there are um, somewhat uh, choppy sidewalk areas that were once cobblestone that, again, in some areas are cracked and not taken care of and overgrown. Uh, the wagon road itself also is somewhat overgrown. Over the last year, there hasn't been, there's been zero maintenance of this area by uh, <clears throat> anyone in the city, uh, whether it be uh, from the government or from just the residents of the district. Um, and these the houses do have kind of little alleyway lanes throughout um, at, at random pockmarks that kind of go into these backyard areas where... Um, you know, like the rest of the city, there are really tight um, uh, alleys and little small patio or enclosed areas. Um, and you can imagine directly on the opposite side of this is uh, access to the Widow's Ward. Uh, so imagine if you're being careful, your eyes are looking towards these alleys that lead directly to the Widow's Ward. I got a two, Sean. <laughs> okay, your eyes are Yikes. are not there. Your eyes are looking at the uh, seagulls in the sky, trying to scope <laughs> out metal parts to them to see if they've followed you from the ocean. <laughs> um, Sass, you got a twenty-one. Yes, sir. Revenge comes in many forms. Um, Sass, you uh, you may be feel and all of you or at least the trio might feel a sense of relief here not seeing any eyes at first but then the lack of eyes looking at you almost has now a reverse effect that it is mm. uncomfortably silent and quiet 
Um, you hear things constantly. You hear a little dropping of uh, rocks falling off of a roof, like little pebbles as if someone stepped, but then you look and see no one. You uh, think you hear someone peeking out a window, but really you're just hearing the wind hitting an old abandoned shutter against something. You do not see anyone or any sign of anyone other than the people who are very obviously just like sitting out uh, in front of their houses, presumably. And the amount of people who are in that position, there's, he's not wrong with his rocking in the chairs. They look like <laughs> old people who probably didn't have the yeah. resources to leave their homes here and have truthfully probably found a bit of respite from, uh, you know, anyone coming to collect any money from them or anything like that. They're, because no one's checking up here. So they're probably just living out, living their best life, truthfully. <laughs> um, but you see like an old man who just is, uh, Wearing a um, uh, what is it? What do you? I don't remember what you call those hats. He's wearing a hat. Tricorn? No, not a tricorn. You know, like the like the um. A newsy cap. Yeah, exactly, like a newsy cap. Yeah, um, he's wearing like a newsy cap, and he has just sort of like what's clearly just like a really like a cotton suit that he wears every day, uh, that is you know, really worn out and fuzzy. Like it just has a lot of the fuzz coming off of it. Looks way too warm to be wearing in the summer. Um, but his face is as crinkled as a prune and he is just sort of uh, petting a, a small little lap dog in his lap. Uh, <clears throat> that, uh, and that's that's the most, that's the most interesting person you see on the street. But uh, that's all you see with the 21. Okay, I'll just, Give him a polite nod as we uh, as we continue our way down the street. He gives you a very big smile and waves. He's a very friendly neighbor. Um, so are you just sort of walking direct, right down the middle of the street on the, the left sidewalk, on the right sidewalk? Why Tell does it exactly matter? exactly how you're walking. Why does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jacques Quack is sticking to the right. Mm -hmm. Um... And like, That's you know, not, not, not like going through the rubble and like climbing over it, but like kind of sticking to it. So like if something happens, he can duck in and quickly, uh, but also mm -hmm. so that he can get a better view of everything on the left side. So like, yeah, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm serpentine. I would uh, imagine I want a direct route. So I'm at the left most of everyone, but I am still skewing towards the right side. So it's basically, it's it's like you got uh, um, Jacquette, who's just sort of trailing the coastline, so to speak, of the rubble um, mm -hmm. with um, Fear and kind of uh, maybe 10 feet out to the right. And Sass, you're just kind of going between the two of them. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> just, uh, just being wary, but trying not to, A, uh, be conspicuous and B, show that I'm afraid. I, I would say um, easy enough to kind of hide your feelings here, but it's a little hard to hide your conspicuousness with you guys kind of spread out like this and 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 kind of just walking and like occasionally looking at each of the houses, counting them. Mm -hmm. um, That's what the cloak is for, Sean. <laughs> yes. Um, but at the same time, you don't really see anyone watching you, so uh, you don't necessarily feel direct threat. It's just sort of that ambient threat of when you don't really 100% know if anyone's out there. Uh, okay, uh, but easy enough. One, two, three, all the way up to uh, 29. You get up to the uh, 29th house. Um, it's uh, uh, probably about halfway up Beacon Street at this point. Um, so when you look back, you can actually get a pretty good view of Dockside and Harbor Lane. Now, granted, it's not like you're you're seeing like down onto it. You're kind of looking at a slightly heightened angle where you can see all the rooftops. Um, and you can see the the uh, the um, tops of the sails of the ships, and even some of the ships even further out in the fort um, in the bay. You can see all that quite well. You're not quite equal yet with um, uh, the Admiralty Court. Um, you imagine when you get to the top of Beacon Street is where you'd be able to see into Admiralty Court. But, um, but you get there and you see, you look, and there is 29 Beacon Street. It is a two-story 
um, apartment building. Uh, not super, super big. It's probably, uh, um, <clears throat> <laughs> what you looking at, Sean? What are you looking at? <laughs> Why do you have to look over there? It's probably about 40 feet across, uh, <laughs> 40 feet deep. Um, it's a, it's a boxed, boxed building. You know, there's, you're not sure how many apartments are in it. Um, there could be, you know, sorry, how many stories? Just two stories. It's not super big. Um, <clears throat> it seems like the, the buildings here are not as tall as the buildings in the uh, uh, rest of town where people are living. It seems like um, there's probably been some new construction in the last year. Um, but here, everything has stayed the same as it was a year ago. Um, there are other buildings taller than that in this area, but nothing gets much higher than three or four stories in, in this part of town. Uh, um, what do the houses directly uh, is this a north south street east, um is this would be a um uh it is a north east to northwest it's okay angled but it is it's it's more north south compared to other things okay uh so what would like the north uh both the i guess the adjacent two buildings really mm -hmm. all I yeah want to know yeah so they're uh, not that they like? they're not that different um, really, uh, they are, um, <clears throat> I'd say the one on the left side is a little bit taller. Um, that one goes up to a third story and the one on the right is more of a, um, uh, it has, a a, a, a two story walk up and then also like a small, uh, side, um, uh, uh, one story, uh, almost, almost garage attached, attached to it. So, and, and, it, and it's in like an L shape where there's just that one garage towards the uh, back of the building and then the two floors. Um, so you have two buildings on either side, or you have uh, a building on either side. Not sure I understand. What's a garage? You mean like a carriage house? <laughs> oh, voice in the sky? <laughs> Don't, I'm... <laughs> yep, exactly, a carriage house. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, do either one of the houses look abandoned? Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, as we're, like, approaching it, Jacquet is not stopping. He's gonna keep walking by, uh, 15 for that perception, and he's gonna okay. kind of, like, say to the other two, like, all right, let's not look too conspicuous now. Keep moving. This is not our target. We're just strolling through Beacon Street, you know, getting a lay of the land. I'm realize, realizing now that we uh, didn't really come up with a plan of what to do once we got here. We kind of just decided to get here. And now we, were we just looking? Uh, uh, let me resolve well, that 16 for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, she said 15, 15. 15, thank you. Um, but right before I do resolve that 15, I just want to check how far back is our Septimus and Bruce? Yeah, you little scallywags. How far back are you? They both went They're so far back we can't even see them. <laughs> 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 That's okay. I'll check in with them when we uh, uh, get back. I don't know. Back. <laughs> oh, there they are. I thought it was like 15 was... feet. Like yeah, I didn't think they were keeping 20. too far. Yeah. Oh, I was hoping for like 50 to 100. Yeah, I assumed it was going to be 50 to 100. Otherwise, you guys just look like you're walking together. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Then 50 to 100 feet. Great. We'll just say 100. We'll check 100 in with back. them in a moment. Okay. Um, so with a 15, um, what you can identify is that the house on the uh, left side, the one that's basically a, a, a almost the same kind of building as as the apartment, another apartment complex, is yeah. looks mostly abandoned. And the reason why you think that is the the door is boarded up and the windows are boarded up. It looks like it's not uh, sanctioned for living anymore. Um, <clears throat> versus the house on the right with the the carriage holder garage. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that one looks like folk are living in there, and mostly just because uh, the best you can tell is because it actually has uh, appropriate doors and windows, and you can actually see one of the windows is open, and you can hear a little bit of music coming from it on the top floor. Okay. 
Uh, what kind of music is it? Like a singular instrument, or mm -hmm. does it sound like okay? Yeah, you can. It's can a I fiddle. get? You can hear a fiddle. Oh. Someone is practicing oh. the fiddle on the top floor. Well, Sea Witch, um, I would say that we're here to get paid, right? I mean, they gave us a job to do, and we did it, and then they skipped out on us. Oh, yeah, this... Yeah. Ultimately, yes, but I meant... Are we, the are plan we just... is, we figure it out as we go. Uh, Jacquette <laughs> says, like, kind of ushering them uh, up the street more, and looking back to see where Septimus and Bruce are. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there they are. Uh, real quick, also, just to give a few more descriptions of the buildings. Um, they're a mixture of, like, like the first floors look like they're made of stone, and then it goes up to sort of half timber above that. Um, you can even see it's kind of like they're a little slanted here and there. Um, there is a uh, um, laundry line attaching the right building and the uh, central building. Um, oh, hell yes! And then, like, it looks, baby. and then it looks like there's like uh, a rooftop garden on the uh, the right building as well, which is another key that someone probably lives in this building because it's it's not overgrown; it looks kept. Okay. Um. So you, uh, two, I think, spot these three kind of like they don't stop, but they do seem to have kind of like a a moment where they you can recognize that they've. Uh, found the, the apartment, uh, and you can also see how the numbers are moving up on the left side. Um, so, what what are you two doing? Like uh, while you watch these these three, I mean, they're not they're they're like fifty feet ahead of you. There's not um, you guys really aren't like separate. You guys can all stay in the scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I imagine Bruce is kind of just holding uh, yeah. onto Septimus and just occasionally be like, uh, "What are they up to?" They seem to have spotted the the residence that they were looking for. Um, you don't happen to sense any sort of suspicious movement behind us, do you? Uh, you know, I haven't really been looking, but I can now. <laughs> it's like I, I was I was hoping that your your ability to see vibrations and stuff would help us out. I'm not quite the the scout myself. But right. I mean, Septimus will roll a, a perception check. It's just kind of like looking behind occasionally to see if sure, sure, um, something just looks amiss. Yeah. It's uh, see. it's really rocky here, so I can't really <laughs> get a good uh, sense of what's going on. What'd you get, Septimus? Sixteen. 16, yeah, so I mean, I'm very much the same as what I said for Sass. Like, you okay. see a few people who are just hanging out, and you hear the violin, you can hear some rock scuffling, but you don't really see anyone suspicious or anything suspicious. Okay, that's fine, then. Then we'll just keep on trudging on, um, kind of just mimicking the movements of the trio up front. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you keep walking, and you pass of you in turn past the house mm -hmm. like and sorry i guess i didn't actually ask what does 29 beacon street look like yeah so 29 beacon street uh has i mean uh, i know it's a 40 by 42 story but like yep. you know yeah so there is like i said there's the stone sort of lower level and then the half timber upper level um it is uh it's actually there is a like balcony off the front um that's not uh so like you have a full 40 by 40 first floor and then the top mm -hmm. floor is um it's an l shape where uh you have um long ways in the back is a story and then there's uh on the top left there is uh another room that comes forward uh and then there is a um uh the the front right part of the building is just capped like there's just a rooftop so okay. if you have you have a full forty by forty, and then you have a L shaped top uh, yeah. uh, of the building. So there is you can see at least one area that is um, like you can see that that um, uh, laundry line goes from the top of the building on the right down to um, to this little kind of it's it is a balcony. It's the best. it is actually a balcony. It's just a f large ten by uh, twenty by twenty balcony where it's like rooftop access, sort of. 
Um, <clears throat> and then uh, a frame roof on the uh, the other part of the building. Um, <clears throat> and you said a, I should just give you a visual ref reference because I have one. Right you here. said that like multiple. It looks like multiple people live here. Uh, you're not sure uh, how many oh. folks live here. Um, it could be multiple apartments, or it could be one. It could be two. Got it. Uh, when are we uh, getting by the house? We're actually approaching it um, right now. We are, at least. They, they, they already did. Oh, do you want to... I don't know. I mean, find I, a reason I, I, to get close? I thought you said it was too rocky. I, it was behind us, that is. I, I mean, um, we'll try... I don't want to cause too much suspicion, so okay, just just follow me. I said to will lead Bruce, like kind of swaying a little towards the house, but not look at, like make it look like he's not fully approaching it. Yeah, totally. Um, so just for everyone's reference, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, I don't have obviously I don't have enough. Door and forge to put build the the two buildings on the left and right I, um, because the door and forge I have you. is not painted yet. Uh, <laughs> I actually do will have enough to make very complicated city set up soon. But for today, this is all of my city door and forge <laughs> put into place to make this one apartment building. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see, there's um, the bottom floor of stone. Then you have the A frame top with another. Uh, uh, abutment or whatever you want to call it coming mm. off of the, the top well. and then there's that balcony there of stone and then there was a laundry line that connects down and basically connects to this corner here uh so folks <clears throat> can uh can utilize that um again yeah you have that one window in the front you have a uh, window down below uh, and then the door to the whole building is on that left lower part So, uh, Loveless, what, what, what do you think the plan is here? Maybe you can climb up there and drop down a rope. We can get them up from above. Again, not my name, but, uh, we're just here to scout out the area. Scope it. We're not breaking and entering yet. It's way too light out. As you can tell, someone is home next door. We don't want to be doing any kind of suspicious activity. Uh, and actually, if there's somewhere on the right where we can, like, kind of duck into an alley or an enclosed space, um, Jacquet would lead the other two there. Yeah, absolutely. You can definitely uh, pull yourselves in where uh, there's you know, uh, <clears throat> an alcove uh, amongst the rocks and rubble. Um, I mean, there's, there's like, full walls of old buildings still up, so you can easily slip into an area where you're hidden. Um, but if you want to actually hide or do this quietly, then I, I would ask for stealth checks. Okay. Okay. We'll do this inconspicuously, I suppose, no is problem. the better way to say it. Yeah. Oh. Ten. Ten? Okay. I rolled two twos, which comes to be a four. <laughs> uh, Twenty-seven. <laughs> okay. Um... So, uh, uh, Bruce and Septimus, you're, you would see them, um, you, basically you would, you would look up, Jacquet disappeared, and the other two seemingly go, huh, and, and like, like, almost like, oh, we're going now, is kind of oh. the, the vibe of what they seem to do as they walk into an alleyway, um, uh, just, a, just ahead, uh, and not, not like directly across, I imagine it's uh, like a block up. Yeah. 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 Well, um. I was bringing him closer to the house, so I think he wanted to make another chat. Oh, yeah. yes, you guys were doing that. Yes, that's right. Okay, so you I two... I wanted to uh, just check while, what's in the house. While you're walking up on the left side, you would, I'll say Septimus, not Bruce. Septimus, you would see them dip into that alleyway. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to just sort of scan by, um, like walk by while you're using the goggles? Yes. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Give me a perception check. Oh, 11. 
Okay, no, I, that's that's not bad. You uh, the thing is, you you there's a a certain level of guarantee with this that you're gonna see. Um, it's a matter of how you can distinguish amongst the guaranteed. Website. I was just disappointed because it was on the twenty and it went. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so as you're walking by, as the two of you are are doing your little your little saunter, just because I want to. Mm, look at that beautiful man. It's that fancy yeah. lad. <laughs> and that dark shape. Yeah, well, he's primed <laughs> with the blackest black, so that's why he looks like a blob. Nice. <laughs> um, you, uh, you walk by, and as you're scanning, um, like the first floor uh, is, is empty, essentially, Bruce. Um, you can see that there is, when you step in, uh, there is a vestibule room, uh, and then there are two doors, one directly across from the door you would enter from and one to the right. So you can surmise there's probably two apartments here um, from from this perspective. Uh, and um, as you're walking by, how far? You're, it's 30 feet, right? 30 feet, yep. Yep. Okay, so briefly, just briefly for a moment, you... Um, like it looks like if this was a video game, it would look really cool. Like the way you can see, because you would just start to see fo like footprints almost as someone is walking in the top floor. Um, you, it's too high for you to get a full glimpse of them, but you basically can get like their lower half or, or, or most of their body wandering around, and they look to be pacing in the top left back room of that L shape on there. Um, as you're like basically just getting exactly enough space to be able to see them pacing up on the second floor. So there is somebody here in the uh, first apartment in 29A. <laughs> okay. Um, you don't get a glimpse of anyone in the first floor, at least within 30 feet of the road. Okay. It's really only and... the back 10 feet that you wouldn't be able to see. Got it. And uh, I probably would try to check out to see um are any of the windows look locked how is the door situation are they are there any locks on them yeah i'll say the roll is not quite high enough to get a full kind of uh detail of the locks you can tell okay. the front door is locked though um the windows it's a little bit more of a uh, it, it depends on the window so you would be able to tell that the lower floor um, has barred windows um, and the top floor does not okay okay all right uh, I don't say anything to yeah yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. just keep walking Hope, um, I'm hoping that he yeah. managed something I, I imagine two, uh, uh, fear and two to stealth is just him peeking out worriedly, like watching them as they get closer. Uh, and as, yeah, I guess we'll we'll fine. approach the alley where they went and attempt to stealth in it. I guess. Go ahead and give me stealth checks. <laughs> as they're doing it, Jacques just like, don't even bother. <laughs> Seventeen. Oh, okay. And, uh, Bruce? Four. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, so, uh, I, I imagine I, these, I, I, these... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I imagine <laughs> Septimus pulls Bruce into the alleyways. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was literally going to yeah, say yeah. that exact thing. <laughs> okay. Um, but, yeah, so Jacquette uh, pulled the other two into the alley, and, and Septimus pulls Bruce into the alley. <laughs> So I'd say the uh, the five of you are, like, I'd say, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet into the alleyway, and there's a, sort of a half-ruined building that you could sort of, not necessarily, you don't want to go too deep into it because it could be unstable, but you can kind of, like, get yourself in a little bit to be not seen yeah. from the road. And still have eyes on the road if you want. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd say it's basically it's kind of like you have like a probably a completely collapsed top floor um, and then just like maybe like a room on the lower floor of this building that is still like you can walk into it. 
it creaks and it's uncomfortable to be in there, not just because it's actually uncomfortable, but also because it sounds like the roof might collapse on you at any point, but you can see the road from it. Yeah, I think Jacquet has ushered everyone and is just like, uh, stay by the door as he's kind of looking out towards the road and then turns back and he goes, so did you both see it? 29, that's our target. Yeah, yeah, we saw it. And we saw inside of it too. Oh, you did the... Jacquet says, holding up his hands, miming what he thinks Bruce's like special sight is. Oh no, it's the goggles. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Very good. I was gonna actually bring you back to do that, but I'm glad you did it already. What'd you see? I, I mean, I didn't see everything, but I did see that. Well, it's uh, two apartments, and okay. the first first floor seems to be pretty vacant. There's a man on the second floor, and the back left corner of the L on the second floor and uh, seems to be pacing back and forth. Okay, okay. There's the, the windows seem to be barred on the first floor but not on the second. This front door is locked or seems to be. It's got a lock on it. I didn't get a good observation of it, but... Oh, I can see inside. <laughs> I can... Uh, I mean, if I had more time, I could, could get a little more, but... Of course. Well, I don't know if we want to be loitering too much around. Might raise suspicion, but... Do we Did you notice... To... Hmm? I was going to say, do we just want to go and knock on the door and be like... No. We're collecting. Mm -hmm. No, why do you think that would be a good idea? That would be so suspicious. <laughs> I don't know. Just There's somebody there now. What if they're not... What if it's, what if it's him? What if they're not there later? What... Okay. What, if it, okay. what, if, what if it is him? Let's play That's this what we're out, looking Sass. for. Okay, and what do you propose we do? I want to go demand why the fuck he left us in the middle of the ocean. Okay, that's fair. I kind of just wanted to beat him up and take all his money. For causing me I mean, so we could much do, distress. We could do that too, but first I want answers. But when the Fred said that the Bone Ratter had left, but that doesn't uh, mean that he's on it. And the captain not does not sail his ship. No, he's not. Did we not tell you this? I've no, never seen him before. Never at all. No, he doesn't. So sail you don't his even ship. know if it's if it would be the captain. So I'm sorry, we don't have there. any <laughs> identifying, we don't. <laughs> we can identify I, you know other you crew know members, you no, know, no, no, I, false I, lead the whole time. No, 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 no. I would know. I Did would you recognize. you know what he looks like? No, but I recognize the captain's vibe. I would recognize. His vibe? <laughs> His vibe? Are you kidding me? I'm Okay, so we've done all this. I was on the pretense you knew what's your fucking captain. You don't. I mean, I guess that was a pretty important deed, but tr I, I promise, I promise. If if I were to go in there right now, I would be able to tell you whether or not that was him. Do you want me to prove it? Got this disguise on. He doesn't know what I look like either. That's good. All right, just to clear things up. I mean, I was just a stowaway, but there was a dragonborn. <laughs> he was an old man. His name was Bjorn. He seemed to be second in command, right? Right. And then there was Cornelius, who is that lazy slouch. Right. And Twigsnap, Twigsnap who was with yes. us. And uh, that went doesn't missing. sound like it was Twigs. Right, 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 right. I doubt that's that's them. Do you do you know any of the others? Th those are just the ones I've met. Do any of those people live in the be, city here? You'd be able to recognize other members of the crew. In, yeah, this is uh, the only uh, ones I wrote down. <laughs> I mean, if, well, if, we know we know the captain's name, right? You got it from right. the dock master. Yes, but if we go on there knocking, oh, is this Mister Hastings? And he's like, no, it's not. And it is. How are we going to know if he's lying? Well, he the, the, the you we might be able to play this to our advantage. I mean. Mr. Hastings has not seen our faces before. He's a captain. Just okay. 
Captain Hastings. Just make sure. I think you're all, you're, 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 you're overlooking the fact respect. that we don't know have any visual identification of what this man looks like. But to be honest, I kind of just thought that there would be like notes and papers, letters, maybe giving him an, us an idea why. I I am curious as to why these events happened, and I also want my revenge. Those are the two things I'm looking for here. So. I, personally, would prefer if there was no one there, so we could do our snooping undisturbed. Does that Makes make sense? sense? Yes. Uh, I mean, is there a way to get me close and so I don't look like I'm kind of just loitering? I don't know. I think this sounds a little dishonorable. I mean, this taking his money is different from stealing his money. I mean, stealing. you guys just getting... cheated. Uh, I was taking a... different than stealing. <laughs> well, you know, one way you say you owe me I'm taking and your take money. it. Right. Wait, so which way it's is much more better. <laughs> Oh, taking for honor, sure. Right? Are you kidding me? Also, I think it was uh, somebody, I don't know who was about to say it, but we did rig a fight. And right. That was How is that honorable? honorable? Well, I had nothing to do with that. Actually, you, you were a participant in what? it. Yeah, Didn't you receive you, um Look, I was just you trying to win. Me. I did not I, I, w I did not know the fight was rigged. That's not true. You, we all agreed on it. That's so not true. You were there. You were a part of that. And everyone, I everyone. I, think I, I specifically fight. refused we to... We're getting off topic <laughs> right now. <laughs> What time of day is it, Sean? <laughs> Weather-wise? Good afternoon. <laughs> no, 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 I get it in the time-wise. Oh, time of day. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so excited to tell you guys. The... I did hear type, and I was so excited to tell you guys what the weather was like. <laughs> Sean, what's the weather? Tell us the weather. <laughs> I told you the other day. It's it's a clear day. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, it, it is... Uh, uh, this would be a early afternoon because you guys spent the morning uh, buying okay. armor and then came over here around midday. So, and you haven't gotten that far in, so it's probably like truthfully like twelve thirty. Well, perhaps for the time being, I wouldn't want to go back talking to Bruce directly, kind of, but not in front of everybody. Walk back in front of the house, and um, because we just passed it, I've read some decisions. Perhaps we can take. I don't know, set on one of these old ruins and just stake the place out until nighttime. We know somebody's yes. in there. The building to so, the left looked abandoned and also has a bit of a height advantage. Why don't we go in there? Yes. Additionally, there are... Someone is around next door uh, to the right of 29. I assume that would be 31. Um, not... The best idea, but potentially, if anyone's interested, we could go and uh, ask some questions. See if they have any information. I heard a fiddle playing, so someone is definitely home. It would be smart to stake it out for a while, see who comes in and out. Uh, how, I mean, how are we going to convince this fiddle player to let us yeah, in how, our house? Let him how, how no, 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 I'm not... Asking to go in there, so there's two houses. Left house, abandoned, three stories, stakeout house, yes. Uh, right house, two stories, not abandoned, fiddle player. Information. If one of us goes up there uh, and, you know, asks, you know, maybe he's like, Oh, my brother, you know, I thought he was supposed to be home. Have you noticed anyone? You know. Some information. It sounds like that's the job that you're going to do. And the rest of us will go and uh, stake out in building on the left. How, uh, Sean, how far away are these buildings from each other? Uh, there are, um, between each of them, there is about a, a 10 foot opening. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll go with gloveless, just in case there's trouble. It no, could be no, useful no. to have I, somebody. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I'll do that by my if, unless you want to go by yourself i just and jacques kind of like leans back a little and he's like sometimes you say things <laughs> and it upsets me well uh, you know that's when we're discussing things as a team if you want me to keep my mouth shut uh, i'll i'll do my best i i, I can be quiet i promise 
uh, eyes him and just like, okay, I could use muscle in. You've got a lot of it. So I, I nod try... without saying anything. All right, so you're so... going to try to intimidate him. No, 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 no. It's only if something goes wrong. That's why fear is there. I'm just trying to understand what what what's the preface to you questioning this man? Like, why are you asking these questions? Ah, I was gonna do something like, uh, <clears throat> here, I'll even, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, my brother, uh, I thought lived next door, <laughs> um, but when I went knocking, no one came in. I was just wondering if you'd seen anything over there. Uh, how did that sound? Good. But is the brother is is the captain at Tabaxi as well? Well, there's two. Uh, oh, uh, I mean, I could always, you know, change my face if need be. Okay, oh. My friend, my friend. Uh, okay. My very, that, good that fr- my, my very good friend lives next door, and I was just uh, curious. Uh, no one's home. Uh, if you'd seen them. All right, then I guess that could that could work. That that actually that could work. That's impressive. Thank you. Uh, you know, pretty soon, two more levels, and I can do any of your voices. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, Fearn and uh, Jaquette are going to question the neighbor to see if they've seen anything, uh, while the other three are going to sneak into the left-hand building to. Uh, to start a stakeout. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna start with the sneakers, uh, and then we'll jump over <laughs> to the, the sneakers. Uh, but there's three of us. Um, something I would like to do. <laughs> yes. As we're sneaking, and I don't know what the order is that you were just gonna have us do it. As we approach the abandoned building, does it look structurally t- sound? Not like the one that was like uh, we were next to. It looks like it was collapsing. Give me and a if few- not. If not, I'm not, I don't want to roll for it. I would ask Bruce, Mr. Construction Man, mm. to be like give a, a little like feel and and kind of feel see that out. See what's unstable. Yeah. Um, so give me a perception check on that building. Um, and then I'll ask one person from each group to roll a d20 to see which one goes first, actually. I'll do it. Sure, you can do it. Thanks. You said perception? Yep. Got this clay. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm going to save all my rolling. You need a nat Let's... 20 to beat me, baby. Hey, we picked the right guy. I got 17. <laughs> We're going first. We're okay. going first. Uh, what was fine. the perception check? It's not a competition. Uh, eight, it's 18. Just... No. It's, it's literally We're just the same a... <laughs> uh, 18. Uh, so, I mean, the building, there's no signs. I mean, there's a little bit of like wear and tear on the exterior, um, some cracks, but generally it doesn't look, it's not like crooked, it's not collapsed anywhere. Um, okay. It looks. It, lo- it just looks abandoned. It just has the the, the windows and doors, uh, um, bolt uh, boarded up. That's fine. Then I won't say anything to Bruce. Then if it looks that way. All right. So, um, our sneakers. What? Uh, how do you sneak? How do you approach? What is your your method is, is I mean, there... should we just go for an obvious approach? Just take out something from one of our bags and hold it up front like we purchased something, you know, from down the street. I oh, know. getting into the house is a different issue, but I meant walking past the house. But is a... I think he's asking how we're going to get into it because it's boarded up. Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, um, I could uh, <laughs> take a look. <laughs> Around the house and see what is there. I was gonna say, is there is there a is sex? there like a way to get to the back of the house? Yes, there is now. Yes. Okay. okay. So you can, if you can go alleyway. to either the alley. You you can go past it and go the alleyway that's not also connected to the Hastings house uh, or apartment, or you can you know however you want to get back there. Just let me know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you all make eye contact one last time. As we're as we're still in the alleyway that we are, kind of looking across, it's like. When we passed, I did see another alleyway. Perhaps if we sneak down there as best we can, we can um, find access in the back because it'd be too suspicious, obviously, to try to break down and through the front door in the middle of the street. Right, so I also think it's going to be suspicious if three of us go in the same alleyway and don't come back. So maybe... 
Space uh, it out by like uh, ten minutes or something. Yeah, maybe, or maybe, but maybe use different entrances and not all go the same way. Can we go? Are there two alleyways? In, on there are two alleyways, um, and it does look like the back areas of these buildings are, do are connected by further alleyways. It's more of a, a, a network of buildings than just like one line of buildings than like the widow's word. So, okay. Sean, since I've uh, have I I've been here before, right? Like I've been in Hyven before, or not? Only the dock like, area. Only the dock area. All right. Never mind. Uh, if you want, I uh, I have a pretty innate sense of direction, so I can go and kind of snake my way through the back alleys and and find a way through so that we don't all go the same way. Okay, then you do that and I'll go with Bruce because he can't see. That's so fair. we'll have to stay together. That's fair. And we were seeing together on the street anyway, so it's I, it would be fine. To be fair, I, I can I can <laughs> see it's just I, I can't see it. What's a, what's ahead of me, or you know, if I'm following. Yeah, but it'd be more suspicious if people saw each of us again separately going into an alley than just us together. Again. So let me walk back up That's the street. True. Let me walk back up the street, and I'll go through. I'll give you alley. ten minutes. Yeah, we'll 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 sit here for another for ten minutes, and then yeah. um, then we'll make our move. Right, and I'll meet you inside the house. Oh, we'll meet at the back of the house because I'm assuming that it, that the back is probably boarded up as well. Right, 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 right. All right. I'll see you in And then this. we'll figure it out from there, hopefully. All right. I like it. One step at a time. Okay. So you're going to step out into the street, Sass? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I am. I'm, I don't know. I don't like the way you said that. I, this is the funniest part about this is that I could say anything. I You'll, know. You guys will be like, what does that mean? I know. I exactly. literally just said, are you leaving the alleyway you're in right now? <laughs> yes. I'm leaving the alleyway and I'm going to do my same, like what I did before, like the serpentine kind of like walking back down the street and then uh, uh, passing our original destination. And then when I get maybe about a third of the way back to like a third of the way from like the archway that we mm -hmm. came from duck into an yeah. alley yeah okay. all right um and, and then like use the network just in case okay go ahead and give me a uh stealth check if you're trying to be inconspicuous yeah that's not bad 15 stealth okay um as far as you know there's no one who is looking at you suspiciously Again, right. there's not really a lot of people. Occasionally you hear some people in, because you're going to walk past, so there's other apartments. You hear other buildings where some people, you hear some someone arguing with someone a couple uh, blocks into the alleyways. You pass by um, <clears throat> the abandoned building and you look in the alleyway that's right immediately there and you can hear snoring. As you can see, there's some drunk sleeping off the, the previous night in the alleyway. Um, pass on by couple houses further before dipping into the alleyways um and uh they're relatively empty as you <laughs> backtrack uh a <laughs> doop, doop. Uh, couple doop, doop, you know go in like one that. building and back into the side alleys twist through you can see there are these back patio areas that have fencing and stuff and it's a lot of it's overgrown um and there's not a lot of folks here uh you see one person i think that's actually uh like alive and doing things and they're just <laughs> watering plants in the back in a backyard area but backyard mm -hmm. i mean is literally like a five foot square yeah. um <laughs> where they're keeping some plants and they, it's just this older woman and she just looks and smiles at you as you walk by i smile back with a little salute yep and i'm trying to find my way to the back of uh back of the house you find your way to the back of 27 beacon street um 29 where... beacons oh no 27 that's right oh it's you want to go to the back of 29 no 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 i don't no no, <laughs> no uh <thank> now <laughs> that you are in this back alley and you get approach you can now see that 29 beacon street on the second floor has two balconies mm. so the back of the two of the back of this building. The back of it has two balconies yep. coming yeah, yeah. off of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, cool. Uh, I'm, is there anybody on there right now? 
Uh, no. Okay. All right. I'm still gonna like, uh, like if there's like a like a shadow or something, because I know if anybody were to walk out onto the balcony, I don't want them to see me. You want to take a perception check? Yeah. Go for it. As you imagine now, uh, oh, hug, hug the eight. right side of of the alley. Uh, you don't really notice much. I think the only thing you notice is that the doors are open to mm -hmm. the, the balcony closest to you. So okay. uh, the balcony along the A-frame, in the back of the A-frame right now, yep. is yep. open. The doors of it mm -hmm. are open. Okay. All right. And I will pop squat and just uh, wait for the other two. Um, after waiting the 10 minutes that we discussed, mm -hmm. I'll... Uh, Turn to Bruce, um, hold his hand or whatever he was doing to guide him before. <laughs> um, be like, I don't think there's any reason. Kind of like peering out, it's like it's pretty lifeless. I don't think we need to be too s sneaky. And even if we tried, that might be more suspicious. So let's just kind of like we're just going through a stroll. All right. And we will just walk out mm -hmm. and just walk into the other alley, like okay. we're just. Like we have somewhere to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you step out and you walk along the street and I imagine you w walk past 29 again, past that first alley and then duck into the second alley uh, to meet with Sass back there. Uh, yeah. So Sass is hugged up against the alley. Um, you both would also notice the drunk sleeping in the alley. Um, and when you enter into the back crossroad, you would notice to the left a couple houses down is that old woman gardening right now. That's pretty much the extent of life that you see out here as you meet up with Sass at the hugged up against the back of uh, 27 Beacon Street. Okay. I've got There's a bunch of garbage here, basically. Like, you're basically standing out in, like, the back dumpster area of these buildings, and there's detritus mm -hmm. everywhere. No one's, no one's cleaned up the trash here. There's just broken down furniture, rotting food. It's all quite horrible because I, I also just remembered that this is, I described this day as very humid after the storm Ooh, yesterday. Yes. So it's um, ripe in this back alley. Before, can, can I retcon something really quick? Sure. Um, well, I guess it depends. It depends. It depends. <laughs> uh, so having pretended to be drunk many a time, may I... Mm -hmm. uh, see if that drunk snoring in the alleyway is actually drunk give me an insight or, check. thank you i didn't want to say i want an insight i wanted to six i snoring pretty loud <laughs> all right all right three of you meet up <laughs> uh <laughs> at this point <clears throat> i think bruce is gonna put his goggles back on and um try to see if there's any easy exits or sorry entries into this building sure yeah so i'm not even gonna ask for without a, having to without having to break anything yes yeah so i'm not even gonna ask you for a perception check here the first thing is that there is an actual walk up in the back of this building um so you can there's you know you don't have to break into the lower level you can walk up to the back door of the top level um oh. it's not open necessarily it's not just an but you're, it's not boarded up, though. So you can check to see if it's locked. Okay. Uh, up here. And I'm, I'll uh, walk up the stairs and, and check the door. I'll, for, uh... for you three, this, this building is kind of like my old apartment on South Whitley. I shouldn't say the actual address. My old yeah. apartment and I have to walk up in the back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you three have been there, so. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, it's a nice. great visual. Okay. Yeah, that same flat roof style old mm -hmm. building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll follow him and we'll get to the door. So yeah, so as you get up to the top of the walk up, you realize like you could probably watch from this walk up, like even if you can't get inside, it's just you're a little exposed. Um, so do you want to check the door? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it is, uh, it, it does, it's not, locked but you can tell that there is um a, a, at least one board on the other side like it's not fully boarded up but someone when they were leaving this place they just boarded up from the inside here before leaving over out of a lower floor and boarding up the outside so a good shove would open this door 
um, uh, easily enough. Um, but if there's anything else you'd want to try to do. Do you want me to... Mm -hmm. uh... Here. Here you go, Saskia. And uh, Bruce is going to reach into his uh, his backpack where he apparently has a crowbar. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, just stick it in this little uh, edge right here and just give it a good... Uh... I can do you one better. Uh, oh. Can I Can I see through the cracks... Like into the into the space. Oh, like the door cracks through through the yeah or see uh, through yeah 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 anywhere tight. like is there a keyhole? Uh, there is. Uh, you can look through the keyhole if you'd like. Perception check. Yeah, I just like I, I the I'm not looking to per, to perceive. I'm looking just just so I can see. I want a misty step onto the other side so I can open the door from the inside. So you are gonna need to perceive though for that. Okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you keep the crowbar though with you so you can bring it with you inside? Yes. If you do see through. Fuck. It's, don't need a, it's not a super high DC. Yeah, mm. it's seven. <laughs> it was higher than that. Anyone have guidance for for her? Uh, uh, I do. You do. Yes. Can you, give, can you give her guidance? I'll, 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 I'll rub her back. <laughs> you got this because <laughs> uh, you don't even need to roll it the DC was an 8 uh, <laughs> I got a 2 so a 9 oh right oh, wow. um, so it is really dark in there but basically you're able to like see like just one area where light cracks through one of the boarded up windows so mm -hmm. you spot that and it's not obscure, heavily obscured by the darkness so you can miss okay. a step there Beautiful. Pew. What does it look like oh. when you misty step? Um, without without so... explaining it to them that you're about to cast magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll take the crowbar uh, and be like, thanks. And just kind of do the whole little neck crack thing as Septimus is giving me like the, the, the pep talk there. And uh, I will look through and find a place where I can uh, teleport. and. When I disappear, you both get splashed with a little bit of seawater. Um, and I, <laughs> I, I I appear in a splash of seawater in the in the other side. Um, yeah. Excellent. Holding a crowbar. <laughs> so uh, I'll describe immediately gonna... what you see. Um, actually, if you yeah. two have any reactions to that magic that just happened in front of you. Oh, jeez. No. No. Oh. 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 That's uh oh, wow. salt water. Are you in? Are you in there? Yeah, pretty cool, right? Pretty fucking cool. It was. I, it was. <laughs> I imagine <laughs> it literally is like a silhouette of sass of seawater that that just splashes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Uh, I guess we don't have to make too much noise now. Remove the, My the feet the... are wet. <laughs> Fine. Sorry, I should have warned you. Um, so, Sass, you, uh, it's very dark in here. Do you have dark vision? I have devil sight. Oh, okay, then never mind. Oh, then you didn't even need to roll then before. <laughs> Great. <laughs> because you can see through heavily obscured darkness. That's right, I um, forgot. So, uh, <laughs> gotta I need to write myself a sticky remember note. remember those features. Right. Those, uh, feet, those features. Uh, and some free massage for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so Not this nothing. Whole, um, I appreciated it. Uh, this this place is emptied out. Like people like didn't just like abandon this. They left. They completely took everything. You know, mm -hmm. there's you know there's an old radiator there's some pipes there's like the the like the um dust stains on the floor of where furniture once was and then just some detritus here and there mm -hmm. um, but this building has been fairly well preserved in its abandonment um but uh but you rush to the door and you can quietly now that you have the comfort take the the wooden uh post off open the yep. door and the three of you can step inside now before we go further with the three of you stepping inside i want to jump out to the folks uh, the other group. Okay. So, uh, the uh, two of you would have watched Sass leave, uh, and Bruce and Septimus wait uh, until their turn to go, and you two can feel free to go whenever you would like. Okay. Do you want to wait uh, till Bruce and Septimus leave, or go before them? 
No, wait for them to leave. Uh, and as they do, uh, Jacquette's going to go, okay, okay, you know what, just in case, let me just... Uh... And he's going to do this over his face a few times, and he's going to go, a bing bong bing bada bong 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 on his uh, little hand drums, and he's going to cast Disguise Self. Uh, disguise Self on himself. Uh, making him look like a uh, human sailor. Um, do you want me to bring a weapon or look non-threatening? Uh, no, no, no. <clears throat> I should practice. Uh, no, it's fine. Just, you know, we're just two folk looking for our friend. Uh, he's supposed to live... In should I, should I talk like a sailor? Uh, are we be coming to? F no, that's too much. Uh, no, I think just you know, be your big burly self, and uh, if how, something goes wrong, how, how much do you know about sailors? Uh, I know that they work a ship. I know that they dock sometimes for All weeks right. to months on end, but are generally out at sea. My, my my recommendation is don't try and be a sailor. Okay. I'll, you know, just be a sea. I just came in from... We're coming to visit our friend. That's the thing about a lie. You keep it simple, you keep it sweet, you get what we need, and then we get out of there. All right. Sounds good to me. Uh, Sean, I'm going to leave my greatsword in this house just because I could summon it at will and... You know, that way I don't look as threatening. You're muted. Makes sense to me. Uh, you can definitely leave the uh, the greatsword behind and summon it if you need it. Um, and the two of you go across the uh, uh, street and um, <clears throat> you go up to the uh, apartment building uh, on the right side. Uh, and um, when you go check the door, it is unlocked. Um and you can step I'm in not. if you'd like. I, I would... Wait, it's an apartment building? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so step in then. Okay. So as you step in and immediately go... You, when you walk in, there's uh, basically a set of stairs um, that go up to the uh, second floor. And then on your left and your right are doors. Um, and then okay. you can see up at the top of the stairs uh, is another door, which you presume leads to the apartment where you heard the, uh, the violin or the fiddle. All right, so we'll just go up to that door. Okay. Yep, I'm right behind. And uh, all right, let's uh, let's let's do this. <laughs> knock, 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 knock. <laughs> uh, you and when you walk in, like you can hear the fiddle as soon as you walk in. Mm -hmm. As you step up, you go and you knock, and you hear uh, the fiddle stop. Um, and uh, <clears throat> someone does come to the door. And the door opens like very, very slightly, and you can see there mm -hmm. is a um, chain lock on it as it opens. As you can see, a um, green-skinned face on the other side, um, with very small horns, um, and sort of this really dark, dark, dark purple hair. Um, as you can see, a tiefling woman on the other side, and she looks to you too. Uh, and uh, immediately, like, no insight checks needed. Like, she looks, like, uncomfortable and nervous that someone's knocked on her door. Um, uh, excuse me. Pa uh, sorry, I don't mean to bother you. I just heard the, the fiddle. Um, lovely music you got there. Uh, we're looking for a friend. Uh, all I know is that he's supposed to live at 29 Beacon Street, but it looks, you know, pretty abandoned. I don't know if you've seen anyone there recently or... Um, uh, you, you, you mean my neighbors? Uh, yes, at, at 29. Um, who, who are you looking for? Uh, Thrillby. Thrillby Lossus. Um, I don't really know my neighbors, so I guess that didn't really help. Um, that's fair. Uh, he, he's a, he's a, Half elf about my height, uh, or actually, I guess he's kind of between the two of our heights. Uh, it's been quite some time, 
Um, you know, lighter hair. Looks um, like he belongs here. Um, uh, it, why, why, why didn't you knock on his door? Why did you knock on my door? Uh, I tried to knock on his door. Uh, there was no response. It's locked. Uh, he told us to meet at his home, and I was just wondering. I mean, I, uh, given the state of this place, this is my uh, first time coming here to uh, Hyven. Uh, I'm a little surprised by the condition, so I just wasn't sure if he's moved since we received his letter. Do, 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 do you work for the Commodore's office? Who? The Commodore's office. Do you work for the Commodore's office? No, we're I just we're new to town. Um, give me a persuasion roll. Eighteen. Okay. Um, as soon as you say you don't work for the Commodore's office, she seems to. Uh, and I know you're not lying, but she believes you. Right. Um, and she seems to um, uh, uh, visually relax. Um, <clears throat> and she takes the lock off the door and opens the door up. Um, and she's, uh, um, you know, she wears uh, a kind of a, uh, a vest over a corset with, with a short-sleeved tunic underneath with a long uh, uh, skirt. Um, and you can see she's holding the, the violin uh, in one hand. Um, and she just looks now and says, okay, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know any Thrillby, um, and I, I, I don't really look and watch where my neighbors come and go, but I, I've, I've, I've not seen anyone go in and out of that building anytime I've looked. If I've, you know, I, I don't really leave the, 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 the house much, um, uh, the, the, the furthest I get is the, the balcony, and she points behind her you can see she's in a studio apartment up here mm. um and i go like i i go or into the roof roof um uh and you look about and this woman's a hoarder um and like clearly like a probably agoraphobic and um uh plants her own food on a roof and stays here because no one comes after her here um but um um uh, I, 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 maybe on the balcony, I maybe saw someone, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I didn't see anyone go and go. No one left. No one came in the front door. Any uh, lights on recently? Um. Uh. uh you, you know, actually, I think I did see. I did see a light. Not, not oh. very small. Not 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 electric, um, probably a candle, maybe. Uh, um, yeah, actually, you know what? I did, I did see that. But I've never seen anyone come and go. Well, maybe Thrillby's there then. I guess we'll just have to knock a little louder. Uh, thank you so much, Miss. You've been a pleasure. Uh, and don't worry, I won't tell no Commodore about you. He says, thumbing his nose at her. And she does smile at this co- kindly and respects the the um, the know-with-all to, to kind of understand the situation. And and then she kind of looks past you to fear and, and just sort of gives him a a, a, a smile as well. Um, you know, you've you've made a a, a a connection. Like they they um, she seems to not trust you guys, but like she's not going to be scared if you showed up again. Is that, is that all? Uh, yeah, I think that's all. Thank, thank you again, Miss. Uh, bye now. Goodbye. <laughs> she slams <laughs> the door shut, and and uh, you can hear it lock behind her. And the the fiddle immediately starts back up, and it is quite beautiful. Um, almost a shame that someone locks themselves away with such talent. Uh, well, that wasn't that helpful, but it wasn't that hurtful either. I guess we'd best Yeah, go. I guess so. Um, I mean, we learned a few things. 
uh, for one, you know, it's not really being lived in. So if somebody is going there with like a candle or whatever, we might be able to, you know, sneak our way inside and surprise them when they do arrive. Or it almost sounds like whoever's there is just like her and never leaves. Hard to say, really. Come on, let's go join the others and see if they've noticed anything. All right. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I imagine the two of you will exit out and slip into the alleyway. Yeah, and like go around behind 29. Yep. And maybe use this time to check around the back as well. Yeah, if you both want to give me perception checks while you're you're uh, in the back there. 16. I got an 18. Okay, so you both would notice the balconies that uh, Sass had noticed as well. Um, and I'll say you even get a very brief glimpse inside. Um, like, not, like, super well. You basically just get... Um, uh, um, a look at the doors are open up on that top floor uh, on the um, what would be the right balcony from your perspective in the back. Um, and you can actually, it's, it's less so that you he see the person and more so you hear the person actually pacing around in there um, and uh, muttering to themselves. But it's too fi high up for you to hear the exact uh, words they're saying. Pausing for a moment, Jacquette looks over at Fjern and goes, "Can you mind me uh, the boosting?" I was I was thinking the same thing. I immediately <laughs> like uh, get on a knee and hold my hands out for like him to uh, like I, I put my I go like this and I put my hands out like to, for you to step on my hands. Step and lift. Okay. Uh... So, um, let's see. Are you trying to just get a, a higher advantage to listen better, or are you actually trying to climb up? Uh, just to listen better. No, I'm not cool. trying to climb cool. up. Cool, 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 cool. All right, give me another... I, I uh, put him on my shoulders, so he's standing mm -hmm. on my shoulders. So that's, excellent, like, pretty excellent. good height. Yeah, yeah, because that would get you up, like, a good, like, 12 feet. Um, uh, so, yeah, go ahead and give me another perception check lower DC this time to hear what they're talking about. Nine. Okay. Um, uh, I will say you can't hear exactly the words they're saying, but you can hear, though, this time, that this is the voice of a woman. And the, the, they're not talking in a panicked voice. Um, it almost just sounds like they're talking to themselves while deep in thought. And you maybe catch one word here or there, which are all very, um, you know, not enough time. Gotta leave, gotta leave, gotta leave. That's the only thing that you really hear that's worth anything. <laughs> um... So Jacquette kind of like taps Fearn on the head to like help him back down. And goes, uh, I didn't hear much, but it sounds like she is in a rush to get out. All right. I mean, should we maybe intercept her? Uh, are there are there exits back here? Uh, there is uh, a back door. Um, but it looks as though um, it's uh, for the uh, lower floor and not the upper floor. Uh, so it's probably the only exit for the top apartment is probably through the front door. Uh, I'm sorry, that does not get up to... What kind of fire codes do they have in Hive? Jeez. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. Right. There's uh, a fire escape right, right, right next to you, actually. <laughs> oh, oh, wonderful. It's good to see modern... <laughs> Architecture. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Jacquette uh, will say to Fierna, I'm going to stay out here and just make sure that she doesn't try to like sneak out the back or something. Um, 
go meet up with the others at the at the house. Let them know that we didn't really learn too much besides the candle. And then I'm going to wait out here while we continue our stakeout. Okay, do you want me to bring them to you or just wait in the house? No, let's just wait. You know, the more angles we have to cover, the better. And then unless they decide that we should make a move, I'll stay here just to make sure, you know, because like if I'm looking, does it look like, you know, the house that they went into would have like a good vantage point pack here? Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, you can oh. see you oh. can see the walk up. Um, I mean, it would have a good vantage point too. like they, they can see you if they're looking oh. at the right angle. OK, um, never mind then. I'll just go with them. Sorry. I for some reason thought it was different. No problem. Okay, yeah. let's go see the others. I don't yeah, know so what I mean, I'm talking about. Basically, there's a, a 10 foot gap between this building and the next one, and you can see the back of that building has the the walk up um, that they went up. Um, and I mean, granted, the windows are all boarded up on that third story, so it, they do would have to uh, uh, doctor that. Okay. Um, but anyway, yes, you can head uh, <clears throat> head up to. Uh, join them um, uh which path are we taking like are we going the way we came or are we going down the fire escape uh, or at the front uh so you're going just to the next house um where the the others are um so it's okay. it's literally like like i know it's not on the, the map that i'm showing you there but like if you could look on the left of this there's a 10 foot gap and then the house is right there um that's just an extra story up, so it has a good view of. Um, it could have a good view of both this back alley and the front yard, front area. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, the two of you head over to join them, um, and this is where I'll bring everyone back together. So the other three of you are inside the house. I'll give you a few moments before they arrive. Um, but once you're inside, what do you all want to do? Uh, all right, so we probably should, I mean, you guys can see better than I. Good. I was gonna say, how dark is it in here? here? Uh, the only light in here comes from uh, a few cracks in the boarded up windows. So it's it's um, incredibly dark. Keeping it that way. I would like to move to like the front of the house. And if there's like a crack where I can like look to the street and mm -hmm. see the entrance of the house for 29. Uh, yeah, you can. You can also like it's, it would be very easy to like um, like undo one of the boards and, and just like adjust it slightly to get a better view if you needed to also. Um, you know, just only take the nail out of one side so you can Lift yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, you could definitely get eyes on the street uh, from the the um, the side of the house has two windows. From one, you could get the full view of the back alley and the, the in between alley. Um, kind of scoping that all around. Uh, I would say it would might be best um, if one of us views the front of the house, the other behind. That way we can see anybody come in or out until night falls. And uh, uh, Bruce, since you can't see too well, you maybe just keep an eye and see if anybody approaches where we're staying. If our covers my my, uh, my suggestion is I sit pretty next to somebody else, but uh, on the first floor, uh, I could still see inside the house just you know from the ground floor. If you want, if it it's only would. ten feet away from the adjacent building. If it would help, I can see pretty well in the dark. I can do a quick scan of where we are, see if there's anything. I doubt it, but it doesn't hurt to take a look. And Bruce, you could sit with me if you want. Yeah, I'll still with Saskia. And uh, if uh, I need to communicate with you, Septimus, I'll uh, take out a piece of copper. <laughs> And uh, this is this is how I decided I'm going to do this. Hey, Sep, can I get a can I get a piece of hair from you, real quick? Uh, ah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm going to take a uh, 
a copper wire and I'm going to wrap the, the hair around the copper wire, stick one in my little ear hole, and then have the copper wire come out to my... Uh... <laughs> like a microphone? Can you hear me? <laughs> Love this. You do. You hear as if, uh... as if he was whispering right in your ear. You hear Bruce. Um, yes, I hear you. Hey. Right. Good. Please limit this to only emergencies, though. Fine, fine, fine. Um, what does this man look like again, Sass? You don't know? Do you know anything, like a race, at least? I, I don't. I, I don't. That's oh, then I very guess unfortunate that that came to head right now. Okay. <laughs> And I guess we'll see who enters or exits this house. I really do think I could pick up on the vibe. All right, well, if we see something, I'll let you know. Um, I'll say it's at this point that <laughs> you... Maybe you shouldn't uh, say that again to, to, to check quiet. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't plan to. Got enough ridicule. Um, it's at this point that you can hear... Jaquette and Fearn, maybe more so Fearn, uh, coming up the step, the, the walk up behind you all. And you can let them in. What's the password? Uh, I don't know how to do a stakeout. How's that? No, That's try your again. Password. You got two two more tries, then you're locked out. I can't, Fearn. <laughs> <laughs> you're muted. I'm not a I'm not a puzzle person. I mean, I I guess I could try. Sea witch, open up. That's a work. <laughs> open That's the door. A... <laughs> <laughs> um, Jacquet, did you drop your disguise self, or are you uh, just? No, it's still up. <laughs> yeah. So Who the you... fuck are you? Uh, what are you talking about? F it's me. No, it's not you. What happened to your face? Oh, cat. that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and he takes off the disguise. As oh, you see, it kind of shimmers a little, then turns back to Jacqueline. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, just thought, just in case, but it uh, turns out it was just, just a little old uh, girl living upstairs. Didn't really have much information besides that she hadn't seen much traffic and only saw, like, a little candlelight next door. So, but... What was better is that when me and Fern were passing by behind the house, we were able to hear the individual Bruce told us about the walking. Uh, and Fern boosted me up a little, and I couldn't quite hear exactly, but there's a woman in there. And she was kind of talking like, oh, like, I need to get going, not enough time. So I'm thinking, if we stake out the house, it seems like the only exit for her is through the front. If she's going to leave anytime soon, Get her then. Otherwise, we go as planned, and at night, we sneak in, I guess. Sounds good. Did you happen to get her vibe? What did she, did she, yeah. did she get what she felt yeah, like? Yeah, I got her vibe. <laughs> yep. Okay, and? It what was, was it? uh, it was, uh, I need to get out of here vibe. It was, uh, exactly what I, the basing vibe. <laughs> That's the vibe. Not a pirate captain vibe. All right. What, come, come on. I was about to go take a look around and see if there was anything suspicious in here. I doubt it, but also it's very dark. So if you can't see in the dark, watch where you step. Don't worry. He says as light reflects off his cat eyes. Uh... I can see in the dark. Ching, ching. <laughs> Sass, you can see better, though, with double sight. I can uh, see better. I don't. It's not. A... <laughs> you and everyone else, uh, <laughs> as I have dark vision, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I imagine, like, when there's just a bunch of adventurers in a dark space, you can actually, like, probably just, like, see the, like, light in their eyes that, that animals mm -hmm. have. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, except for the human. Uh, <laughs> um, Ooh, human. <laughs> so, so Sass, you want to explore the the lower two levels? 
Yeah, I want to take Bruce with me, but I, I want to do a full, you know, full, full once over. Yeah, just mm -hmm. to see what I can see and if Bruce can feel what he can feel. Yeah. Uh, Fian's going to look out on the uh, on the front entrance of the building uh, from the second floor. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? From the second floor, I want to be uh, looking out. Like, you know, we said we wanted two lookouts. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing I'm going to try to look at the front entrance. Okay. So I'm just looking for an angle where, like, it's going to be hard to see me from other places and just, like, look directly at the door. Yeah, that. I mean, generally from this building, it's oh, almost from every perspective, it's going to be hard for anyone to see you in here unless you're making a lot of noise or light any lights up. Um, because, uh, or like if it's during the day and they catch the board moving slightly, but that's someone who's actually looking for you would only notice that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's let's resolve Sass and Bruce uh, scoping the whole joint out for anything. Um, so, Sass, you can give me an uh, investigation check, um, and uh, Bruce, if you want to do... You can, you, I mean, you both can do perception or investigation, depending on what you want to look for. Ooh, very nice, Bruce. Uh, I, I mean... uh, 28. Oh, shit. Okay, and Sass, what'd you get? 18. Okay. For investigation. All right, so the two of you start to move through the house. The second floor is similarly abandoned, like the uh, the top floor, floor, where there's just old detritus, but mostly it's empty, with the windows boarded up similarly, and Fearn can kind of take his position down in there after you've explored it. Um, the only place where there's anything worth noting is that when you do get to the first floor and you start to explore the different rooms because um, this is also sort of apartment bro broken down in apartments um the first floor immediately uh you smell a, a, a rotting smell um oh. and when you enter into one of the spaces there is a just a, a straight up dead body Fuck. uh uh, it's, uh yeah i don't I don't yeah. know how to handle this. Yeah, no, um, yeah, do just, uh, is there a door we can close? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's in a room. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's just close the door and just tell anybody that, that to <laughs> go in here. All right. Uh, come on, come on. <coughs> All right. I'll shut the door. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Did the body have anything on it? Yeah, I realized. Do you want to actually go look at it, or are you just closing the door? Uh, I'm not gonna look. I can't. I can't see, but I can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, you know what, Bruce? It's, uh, you st stay here. I'm just gonna. I'll take a quick look. All right. I'll pull my scarf up over mm -hmm. my nose and go over. Yep. Go ahead and give me a, an investigation check. Twelve. 12. Okay. Um, the body has been stripped of any uh, notable belongings, like weapons or something that might have any insignia on them. It's almost mostly bones. Um, like, there's still flesh bones. there that's rotting, but it is, like, in the process of almost being completely decomposed. Um, okay. So it's been here for a while. Um, okay. You know, you're not a doctor so you don't Mortician. know how long <laughs> but, yeah. yeah 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 um, but there's no like recognizable features like it it doesn't look like uh, any of the crew um there are sunken the sunken skin on the face the only really yeah. recognizable part of it is there is a big l tattooed on the uh the cheek oh, okay um and the uh the um uh Caught skin on the neck does look like its throat was slit. Okay. Uh, do I know if any member of the crew had an L tattoo on their face? Um, no, but you do know what an L tattoo is in this context, and that it is a tattoo given to someone who lies on a on a pirate crew. Oh. Okay. Was caught lying to the captain. Okay. Um. Oh, 
I was in the middle of writing a note and I just forgot. Looks mostly decomposed. Has no. an L. L. It was the thing after you said he has an L uh, on his face. Throw it. Yes. Set. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't want to freak Bruce out, so I will just go back to him and say, uh, "Yeah, it's it's been there for a while," um, and just. We could just close the door and that's horrible. Just, I know, I don't know. Let's let's go. Let's let's go find a place to, to, to sit. Uh I mean this is probably the first is would this be like the first time Bruce has ever seen a dead body? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Bruce is like like uh, very shook right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't like covered at all. It was just like you opened the door and it was just on the ground immediately in front in that room. Hey. Oh. You all right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's okay I'm if you're good. not. Yeah. Are you uh, sure? No, uh, I just, I'm going to walk over to the window. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go. All right. Go ahead. Take your time. All right. Okay. And as he does that, I'll just be, like, thinking about what that, like, thinking about the tattoo and, and like, I do want to tell the others what it means, uh, but I don't... <laughs> I don't want to scare Bruce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I'll just be thinking about it. Okay. So um, we've got Fearn on the second floor, these two on the first floor, and Septimissa and Jacquette on the top floor, all keeping an eye out on the house. Excellent. Um, are you all just basically, this is where you're going to be until you see any kind of any movement activity or anything like that? I think we ever just post it up. Until yeah. nightfall, and then just <laughs> marking down any like thing we say. I'd also Jacques like to oh, use this as a. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, Jacques definitely gets restless and just paces. Um, maybe mutters to himself and being like, "We don't really have a lot of time. Uh, need to get out of here." But otherwise, yeah, he just looks out. I'd like to use this as a short rest to get my spell slot back. Uh yeah, you can. <laughs> Good Ring. warlock. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we do, I did the if thing. we do, if we do take the time for a short rest, uh, I think after thirty minutes to an hour, <laughs> uh, Bruce might like be trying to like try to distract his brain, like what the fuck am I getting into? Like, um, like okay, all right, back to exploration of the other house. Um, Bruce is going to stay adjacent to a first floor window towards next or next to 29. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ritual cast detect magic and just observe if there's anything magical in my current radius. Yeah, very good. Very good. Um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, so you're, you're uh, up against the, um, the, the, uh, window that we're looking on the next door house so you're correct uh, basically looking out into the alleyway in the front of the other building uh, what's the range on detect magic 30 feet cool excellent um the uh not the f the um uh not the front door which you did identify as locked but the inner doors the f the, the two inner doors um are are both uh have an abjuration magic on them got it um, that's from this perspective. Um, I'd say that is, oh, yeah. Um, the, uh, from where you're standing, and I mean, I guess you could kind of walk up and down and get a little bit more. Um, the apartment that is, um, that that first door goes into, um, is riddled with, uh, elemental magic. Like just you're, it's okay. different different varieties. You've got you've got um, <clears throat> conjuration, uh, uh, evocation, uh, all of it though with a distinct elemental um, uh, vibe. Cool. Um, and how about anything about like a second those those balconies in the back? If I'm pacing back and forth, anything so like you, the entrance back, for this? Yeah, if you paced back. Um, to the back of the uh, place so you can get a little bit of the, the, the balcony with the open doors. Um, 
uh, again, uh, riddled with with uh, elemental magic. It actually almost like the best you can I can visualize this and that Bruce might sense it as. It's almost like there's like a smoke plume of magic coming out of that room. Uh, uh, that's not visible to the naked eye, of course, but like where there's so much elemental magic in that room that it's leaking out the window and, and into the space surrounding. Uh, with this in mind, um, Bruce is going to run back upstairs. Uh, and then I guess the, actually the only other thing, and this is, this is just slightly for flavor, but also just the general vibe of Hyven. This place is no longer powered, um, uh, ever since the accident, but you do see the faint, uh, remnant lines of, um, of power. Uh, of uh, elemental lightning magic uh, going into the, the houses as if there were these were at one time had electricity. Okay. Okay. Hey. All right. Uh. <laughs> uh, everyone. Uh, 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 jacket, uh, Fern, uh, Tuskia, um, Jacquette. Um, Jacquette. My um, name is Jacquette. Not yeah. <laughs> all right, sorry. Like uh, all right. So, the, all the entrances in that building next door are riddled with uh, abjuration magic. Um, no problem. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, you got means of taking care of that? Oh, please! You're working with a master criminal here. Haven't I told you about my exploits back in Domuzerum? Uh, magic lock somewhere. is just another lock. Okay. All right. Ah, uh, in that room, that room next to the balcony where that woman is pacing back and forth, it's almost as if it's uh, leaking elemental magic. What do you mean by leaking? I, I don't know. I, something told me like that. <laughs> <laughs> So the room itself is, is is filled with elemental magic. You're saying? I imagine so. I uh, and Bruce, you may want to either leave for a second or cover your ears because what I'm about to tell them is a bit disturbing. Unless you uh, want to hear. It's, uh, it's, there was something I noticed about the body downstairs. Uh, uh, body. Yeah. There's a. Uh, are you leaving or are you staying? Uh, I, I'm, I'm staying. All right, I'll be gentle. Uh, there's a tattoo on his face. I can't really see it anymore, but it's of an L on his face. Does anybody know what that means? I know what it means, but just if anybody does. No. He's a loser? No. Wait, you found a, co a corpse downstairs? Yes, yes there is a dead, a decompo mostly decomposed body in the room down. Uh, does it mean that the years start coming and they don't stop coming? It's not on his forehead. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. Oh, jeez. It's, on, it's, oh, it's on his cheek, and you only get a, you only get a, a an L on your cheek like that if you've lied to your captain. So, I think that uh, our dead friend down there crossed our target at some point and has been here for a while. Question, why would they tattoo the L if they're just gonna kill him? Well, doesn't mean he was killed for being a liar. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That doesn't, they both, they're independent of each other. It doesn't mean they both happened at the same time. If okay. you're caught lying, you get the tattoo, so everybody you interact with afterwards know that you're a liar. Interesting. So, just, uh, just so we know who we're dealing with. I already knew, suspected he was dangerous, or they were dangerous. Mm. Uh, now, Bruce, you'd mentioned the elemental magic next door. 
Uh, Sass, what, when the Fred had said that Hastings had connections to uh, that group, uh, the Elementalists, what were they called? The Aradunai. Wait, who told us that? We know she, she told you that he has connections to the Alumno Defiance, not the oh, I keep getting the two of those mixed up. Okay, never mind. Uh, Alumno Defiance, which had nothing to do with this, so don't listen to But, wait, Elemental. Wait, and then... Miss, did okay, Mr. there is something did here. Mr. Didn't Mr. Siegel say he had people that knew about the, uh, the Elementals? Well, the elementals. Mr. Siegel is, knows the Elements, but uh, Fiora and... I don't actually know if Fjern had told us exactly the connections with the Red Dandelion, but... Um, uh, I did mention that I was going to right. meet with them and try and, you know, get their assistance, but I struck... I came up short the last okay. time I left a message. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Factions, magic, connections. Let's see where they all go. All right, uh, nice. That, great. So, are we just going to uh, just going to watch? Yeah, wait. It, you know, see. I mean, so during our time so far, it's been like an hour or so. Yeah, has we'll there been like been any an foot traffic around? Oh, like in the streets in general? Yeah. Or just uh, like yes. Movement? Yeah, there okay. are. It's not the kind of thing like you're. It's never busy, I'll say. But there are folks who walk around. Like it wasn't. It wasn't completely unusual for you all to be in the street. Um, uh, but yeah, you would notice people coming to and fro. You would notice there are other people who live here um, in this general area. But whereas the rest of Hyven is tightly packed and and busy all the time. This area has the uh, comings and goings of a small town. Um, and I'd say if you're keeping your eyes out there, eventually you all would notice those children running about the rooftops again. Damn children. Youths. Um, but as that time keeps going, uh, and you keep your watch as it gets later in the day and the sun gets lower. We're going to take a break. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we'll be back in five minutes to see what they find out and see if there's any activity in this house or see if they're going to be sneaking in. Um, so stick around to find out the answer. We'll see you all in a little bit. Okay. Uh, Welcome back, everybody, <laughs> to Adrift in Aldalore. So our heroes have been scoping out the apartment building where one Captain Otto Hastings uh, lives. Um, and um, I, I thought that was a big marshmallow. Um, I wish. <laughs> uh, so uh, after discovering uh, a dead body on the lower level of the neighbor's house, uh, the neighbor uh, or the neighboring apartment building that has been abandoned. That dead body having a, a pirate tattoo of an L on their cheek, indicating that they have lied to their captain, and then uh, their throat slit and has been here for some time. Um, there is a woman inside this this house on the second floor who seems to be uh, uh, occupying uh, Hastings' apartment, or what you presume is Hastings' apartment. Um, there is a lower apartment as well, but you have not identified anyone to be in there. Uh, and you uh, have used Detect Magic to identify a shit ton of magic uh, bleeding out of this place. Uh, almost as if there was a, a chimney spewing out magic from the back balcony. So, we come back to you all. The sun is slowly setting. Uh, it is... Uh, sort of those sunset hours, maybe a little deeper into the sunset hours, approaching dusk. Um, and uh, the folks watching the front can see that there is um, a little old chandler going out there and lighting some of the torches on the street or the, the lanterns on the street. Um, and you can, now that it is dark, those of you watching the back of the house can notice 
very light candlelight coming from the balcony. Um, like specifically, like the only reason you can recognize is because you are looking for it. It is so faint, the candlelight, um, that it would be very easy to miss. Is it coming from like lanterns or is it coming from like somebody holding like a candle? Um, probably someone holding a candle or a candle within like a lantern. Like, um, <clears throat> it's very, very faint. And, is and it it's like almost like inside? you're looking and you just see like, uh, like, like a glimmer of like a light, almost as if like, if it's like uh, as if someone is moving a hooded lantern around and you occasionally see the light a little bit. Okay. And it's like, it's modern inside. equivalent would be someone with a flashlight. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. And it yeah. is inside, yes. Okay. But we see it from a balcony in the area, right? Yes. Uh, so from that balcony that you saw, the doors were open. Uh, you can occasionally see a little bit of candlelight coming from there, from a hooded lantern. So someone's clearly inside with the light and trying to not, like, light the whole room up. Would you like to do anything at this time or still wait to see if anything changes? Um, while it's still a little light out, mm -hmm. can I check the strength of that clothes clothes line that connects the two buildings? Sure. Yeah. So, um, you can go to, uh, so the one thing is, uh, so you, you want to go to the other building? No. So, oh, okay. So, it's I mean, right misunderstood. Building. Yeah. So, in this three story building, you said that there's a clothesline that attaches the mm -hmm. two. Yes. So, I want to go to that clothesline on our side and just kind of mm -hmm. give it a, the old tuggy uh, tuggy to see. Are you going to, um, because you'll have to like open up one of the boards in the window to get to, get to it. Um, which, I mean, it's nighttime, so no one is... Right. It's not like it's going to be super... But yeah, you could definitely yes. do that. Um, you know, rolls needed. It's um, it's fairly uh, um, still... It, I'd, I'd say, like, it might be a little loose on this side of the building, um, but, but loose in the sense of, like, no one's uh, maintaining this side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could truthfully probably just do a little bit of maintenance, tighten a few... Uh, uh, um, screws on there, bolts on there, and, and secure it. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as if it can hold your whole weight, um, I don't know how much a clothesline can actually hold. Probably not a lot. Probably it, not like a one person, person maybe. <laughs> yeah. One person uh, for a few seconds, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. But uh, it's also not a long distance, Sean. It's like ten feet. You said so. True, it is not a long distance, so... If Technically, you, you could quick, jump that far, yeah. True, you could. Um, it's, uh, I mean, a clothesline, it's not going to hold your weight. It's it, it, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to hold any of your weight. Um, <laughs> mm. Bruce would be uh, the closest, and even he's uh, probably a little over. I just uh, want to clarify, is the lo I, I thought the laundry line was coming from the building that was to the right of 29, so I thought it was coming from 31. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it was, but I've decided there's two. But now two. it's not. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. Um, because... Uh, okay, okay, okay. I don't, I wanted, now I want that's there fine. to be one there. That's fine, I want to that's see fine, what that's you, fine. That's fine. That's fine. The answer is uh, no, Sean. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, fear and, you know, seeing you peek out and, like, work with the thing, heads, heads up stairs and finds you and says... I, I I saw what you were doing there. Um, I've got a solution if if you don't mind. Uh, oh, please. Yeah, I've been working on something. I've got this magic spell that I've I've been holding on to. It's called Featherfall. It it you know if we just jump from up here, I'm sure we can make it, and then we could land safely without causing a lot of noise or. Anything like that. So all five of us, like, run from the roof, we jump, you cast the spell, and we all <laughs> float down to the other side. Well, yeah, ideally, I would want to cast it before, you know, we jump. But, okay. you know, it, it like, 
if they it only lasts a minute, so it, it maybe we want to hold on to the little one. He might get nervous and wait too long. I've seen some I've seen some accidents in my day. <laughs> yes, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, that's one way. I mean, like I said, I I also have some spells that could get us around those uh, magical locks, but they're not the most inconspicuous. Uh, and while neither is five individuals jumping from a roof to roof, I mean, those kids were doing it before. We won't look that out of place. And, and it'll be dark. It's not, so it, it should work. Just give me the go ahead. Uh, so is it like safely like night time now? Uh, yeah, I'd say if you you only need to wait like twenty or or thirty more minutes before the sun sets and it's uh you know the only lights are on the lower level of the street and they're only directly on the street. There's no lights in these gotcha. alleyways other than from people's windows. And sorry because I think I got things mixed mixed up. Um, would we be able to jump on that flat balcony? Uh, on the of back the, of twenty nine. So, so looking at the battle map, yes. uh, you have that flat part. Mm -hmm. uh, is that adjacent to our building, or is that on the other side? It's on the other side. Okay, never mind. But you're high enough that if you jumped, you could slide down the roof ah. and, and onto there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jacques goes. All right, well, let's let's gather up the party and see what we all think. Everyone gathers up. <laughs> gather, gather. I Get explain my pattern, my plan again. Sorry, um, <laughs> uh, just kind of spaced out for a second there. I told you to walk away if you didn't want to hear about it. Well, I guess I told Bruce, but you were there. It's just a dead body. It's, Come on, guys. It, it, it's not. It's, it's just, just a dead body. I was not. Uh, not uh, no. Hey, go you didn't on. Even What's see your idea? It. But I'm hearing about it. I'm just. I, I understand that there's a dead body. And I don't need to see it to understand that the the, the, the consequences of us failing are, are, are much more substantial than I had originally calculated. I didn't sign up for. I thought that we were just gonna do like some freelancing, or I don't know. Like ah, this look, is gonna I be a bigger up. discussion after. But right now, please, Fjern, explain your feather magic. Yeah, now is not the time to get cold feet. I mean, if you if it makes you feel any better, if those rat raccoons killed us, we would have been uh, chewed up and probably shitted out somewhere in the woods. <laughs> okay, you know what's actually going to make them feel better? Not that. We we can find something not dangerous for you to do if it would make you feel better to stay over here well i've got a perfectly non-dangerous activity for you to do right now uh, i've got this magic called featherfall which allows you to jump from high distances and take no damage and land on your feet uh you know automatically so no noise made you know we could just gently drift from this three-story building down upon our enemies like an eagle in the sky. I, you don't want me just to sit back and keep watch. Do we and, all and miss all the fun? Come on, man! It'll, this is gonna be a ball. Fear it's I don't, not I don't fun wanna, for him. I don't want to end up like that guy downstairs. Oh, uh, don't worry, my magic is foolproof. <laughs> and that's what the armor's for. Remember. Oh, we're gonna need you when we get there. You 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 know a lot about the magic in that we, in that there building, right? Are we planning on right? fighting somebody? I thought this was to, to to sneak through and collect information. Right, that. But there's a person in there. Okay, okay. Um, Look, right. I don't I don't want to can... kill anybody unless they want to be killed. Don't want to kill anybody either. But what I just, make, if, what, so as we stick to just roughing them up, uh, uh, I guess that's fine. What would make you feel more comfortable, staying here or going over there and being a part of any action that might happen? Uh, so either be alone or 
Oh, God. Um, Septimus, what are you doing? I think it's best chances of being successful if we all stick together. So, I guess. Okay. Uh, stick together. Uh, all right. Um, all right. Okay. First, okay. would it make you feel better if you rode up a back or, or stayed close by? Yeah, it, it, it was. I got you. That's the spirit. Let's put on our brave faces and go get revenge. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there's only one minute on the spell casting, so when I say three, two, one, jump, you jump. No hesitation. So we're That's actually fine. we're actually jumping. Oh yeah. Technically, I we would have fifty-seven more seconds after. That. <laughs> um, so. Uh, so you're planning just to go for it, right? Oh, hell yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Batman style. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Let me just, uh, let's just get, let me just get things ready. <laughs> um, if you guys want to talk amongst yourselves as you're preparing to jump. Yep. Yep. yep, yep. <laughs> so we climb up to the roof. I assume there's roof access. Yeah. There is I'm roof assuming. access. Yes. And it's a flat roof that we're on? Uh, yes, it's a flat roof, and when you get up there, you can see that there is just sort of, like, uh, clear evidence that the uh, street urchin gang uh, was up here at some point. Um, indiscernible how long ago. Um, you find, you find like, an old, uh, an old ball, several uh, different uh, um, sticks and, and stuff, makeshift little, like, uh, lean-tos up here. Uh as this is probably a place where they don't go inside, but they uh, come up here every now and then and hang out. Um, you might start to think that uh, all of those like things that you started to feel uh, anxious about earlier in the day were just those kids jumping from the rooftops. To the rooftops. There, there's some graffiti here. This one's pretty good. It says, uh, mage in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> there is graffiti. They have like painted up the place and thrown, you know, they get paint like there's areas that they've just like splattered paint all over the place um. all right so let's we're jumping once we jump what are we doing after that are we all going in at once and just making a lot of noise and being like who the fuck are you where's captain hastings or are we do we just i don't I know what stealth would be prudent so uh, Fjern said that this will let us land quietly and mm. silently. Mm. Uh, there's a balcony on the back. Um, maybe allow me to go back down there first and enter and kind of scope it out. Uh, our DM isn't quite around to answer questions, but oh, he dropped someone's mini. If that's Jacques White you dropped, Sean, oh lord, I've dropped him enough times. So He can't hear you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he, can still, the, uh, he can still threaten him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more for the folks at home listening. Um, so since I... Uh, sorry, it was really bad time for me to have dropped... Uh, who'd uh, you drop? I've dropped Septimus. Oh, no! 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 <laughs> he didn't have Featherfall. Oh, no. I didn't have Featherfall. <laughs> I haven't casted it yet. No. You jumped too soon. Uh, real quick, Sean. Were there yes. any uh, entrances uh, on that little balcony? Uh, not the little, like the 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 big balcony on the front. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, you can't see it on here because I ran out of doors. Um, <laughs> but yes, there is. Uh, an, if you were to land on that balcony, there is a door there that goes inside. Do we want to split up? Some go in the front, some go in the back. And corner who, corner who's a, whoever so, is in there. So, I gross. imagine uh, most of the. Doors are full of hydration magic, so. Oh, that's right. Uh, my Is thought was your expertise. Uh, I could try to disarm it, but. Uh, Sorry, what was I don't your think thought? I have the proper tools with me. Is I do at my my desk. <laughs> I can help see them. Uh, um, there might be another way to get in, though. I'm... Well. I might be able to get inside, like I did before. It's not very subtle. 
Well, I, I think that, yeah, we're, we want to take a subtle approach. Maybe we should wait on the roof above the balcony until, you know, our friend Glovelist here can make some headway. Uh, but, uh, Bruce, you had a suggestion? Ah, uh, not really. Um, it's more of a... Well, if we can't use doors, what if we use the roof? And I doubt they have any abjuration magic on parts of the roof. You can go in through the roof? Yeah. I mean, it would make a lot of noise. That's one problem. Right. So don't cast the feather fall magic. No, 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 no. I don't. I, we, we still need our, our bits on. No, we would still need to use feather fall to jump onto the roof. I think he's just saying... Perhaps if we access it through the attic, there's probably not any sort of abjuration magic on a uh, an attic door or whatever. Right. Exactly. We can throw something really heavy from this roof down at that. No, no, again. no. We don't need to. Uh, we're trying to stay <laughs> stealthy. I think is what the, we needed to do. That's the whole point of the feather fall. Right. Okay. So we'll just check out the doors then when we get there. And hope yes. we're not protected so like, in the meantime. So all stay close together. Let's use the, the feather fall ability and we'll, we'll, we'll play by you and try to stay as quiet as possible as we proceed. So um, review with me where you're trying to land. On the top, top flat. On the right? top of the house. On so I think top of the on the balcony, or are you trying to like catch on to the A frame? The A frame. Uh, I would say the Wait, upper thought... balcony, not the one that uh has are the railings, going? like the flat roof part. Can we make it if we jump from, or do we have to grab onto the A frame? So, how far can you all jump? That's a great question. This is gonna get some physics involved if you're asking for <laughs> literal. Uh, but long how we, jump. How do we know our jumping range? Is it There's like a if you have more than five feet of running? Uh, you have to have ten feet of running. Like you have to have ten feet that you can run straight and then jump to do a long jump. Um, and if you do that, you can um, cover a number of feet up to your strength score. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> I can't oh. jump very far in that. So 10 feet. Right, but yeah. we're also jumping from three stories up. Yes, so it's so. you have, with with the momentum and with the feather fall, like, mm. you can probably make it to the, like, this is what I said earlier, you can make it and then, like, kind of gently land. You might, those of you with a shorter jump, might, like, land and slide down the A-frame onto the flat roof, mm -hmm. and then those with a longer jump will probably be able to land safely onto the flat roof. Got it. Okay. Uh, what would you say to something like me carrying uh, Bruce? Carrying Bruce? Um, yeah, what's... I have a long jump of 20 feet. And what's your so... total uh, carrying capacity? And Bruce, how much do you weigh? Guesstimate? If you... <laughs> uh, I'd say he's pretty, he's pretty light. He's got to be like 85. Um, how tall 70. are you? Me? He's, I'm 6'2". Uh... No, no, Bruce. He's he should be he's taller for a cobalt, but he's like three, so like three five. seven. Three seven. Yeah, three, five. Okay, then you're actually probably lighter than than the eighty five. Um I mean granted right. it's all the stuff you're carrying too. Um Right, yeah. Co co t normal kobolds in the two to three feet tall range of of, of D D are like twenty five to thirty five pounds. So you're oh, okay. probably but you have a lot you're probably carrying a bunch of stuff, so maybe that is more accurate that eighty five. Um I'd say it's fine for for um, uh, fearing to carry Bruce. Cool. Oh. Yeah, I, I just imagine. Trust me, it's it's easier and safer this way. Okay. Um, and I'm... Sass, if you really didn't want to slide, because your strength's eight, you said. It's ten. Oh, okay, then you're fine. Um, basically, anyone with a ten or higher in their strength is going to make it cleanly. Okay. Uh, if you have less than that, then you will do a little bit of, there'll be a little bit of sliding that'll happen. Oh, 
I just realized something. What? I'm not going to use it here, but... Don't worry about it. Okay, I, I, I won't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> okay, uh, so... Fearn is carrying Bruce over, um, and the uh, rest of you are jumping on your own? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I cast my spell. Uh, you see... Uh, oh, fuck. Sorry, I just I put my hand in glue. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I just got a bunch of glue on my finger. It's okay. Because <laughs> I was fixing I... Septimus while you guys were talking. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I cast Featherfall, and you all get a like basically a mist starts to coalesce in my hand, and uh, it like a a swift breeze. Uh, flows around it and it splits off into five different sections uh, as like this um, gray uh, gust of wind uh, very small and uh, slight slivers through the air and wraps around your each of your ankles and causes like this misty buildup to form like covering your feet and everybody has featherfall now for one minute Cool. Well, here we go. Bruce, close your eyes. All right. Uh, and Fearn's going to take the first jump. I'll go after him. Oh, um, flies through the sky. And I'll follow us. Okay, so it's so sad about it. <laughs> My tie. <laughs> so it's Bruce and Septim or Fear, and that'll get there first. Yeah. All right, sorry. I'm gonna have to fix your arm, your robot arm, later. Okay, let's do this. I'm scared. He's immediately gonna put the mini on the triangle, and it's gonna fall off and break again. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> Yay! Fear. <laughs> they explode. Right. So you all make it across. Um, and with due to the feather fall, uh, you don't make any noise. So yeah. you land gently as opposed to sliding or stomping down when you land. Um, so... And you land. Um, now if you, the second you land, you all feel your weight again, and there's no weightlessness. So your steps will potentially make noise, uh, on the rooftop. What would you like to do? Uh, I would like to, just before we hop down, if we hop down, um, take a look at the structural integrity of the roof, see if there's any weak spots. Is there anything that's could be quietly broken or any entry points to the attic? Uh, yeah. You want to give me a perception check, and I'm assuming you're going to be doing can, your full. Can I do an investigation instead? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. And do I get advantage for having a structural background? <laughs> sure. Squeeze yeah, ring, every little ring, bit. ring it out, buddy. <laughs> Bruce is going through a bad day, so I'll, I'll I'll let him get a little advantage here. He's he's seen his first dead body. <laughs> uh, twenty eight. Huh. And okay, so with your thirty feet of blind sight and investigation here, um, so uh, in essence, you all are trying to find a way into these like the A frame part. So you're yes, okay. Um, basically into the crawl space of the attic because it's not a, it's not like a huge full attic. Um, 
you uh, notice that there isn't, there's the only, from where you are currently, the structures of the rooftops are fairly decent. Um, they are not, uh, the. It, if anything, the, the roof that you're on currently is less structurally sound than the A-frames. Um, you notice that uh, the room beneath you immediately, because uh, um, you're getting more than just what you're looking for, obviously, because you've got 30 feet all around you. The room beneath, beneath you immediately has the, a, a massive hole in the floor uh, down to the lower level um, that has been like, uh, like broken apart, um, ripped up board by board so that there's, in essence, easy access to the first floor without going down the stairs and through the doors. So these apartments are connected um, uh, okay. by this ripped hole. Um, and, and basically everything in that room has just been pushed to the side so they could rip this hole out that allows easy access to the first floor um, without using the stairs. Uh, <clears throat> the um, room that, uh, that she is in uh, is um, all tables filled with uh, various different um, uh, tinctures, uh, alchemical stations, um, uh, uh, artificing stations, basically anything that would be needed for, to handle caustic and elemental materials, as well as uh, work with uh, tinkering. Um, <clears throat> you can see just a little bit of the front room, and it's basically a bedroom, as much as you can tell it's a bedroom. Um, and there is a door out to that balcony from the bedroom. Um, and uh, uh, the rooftops themselves, I mean, you could dig through some of the, 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 uh, the tiling, but um, it's, it's fairly secure in, in the sense of there isn't really an entrance into the attic without making a lot of noise. It's, you could definitely get in. Like, you could tell from the structure, like, you could get in. It's just it's going to make noise. Okay. So. Uh, I relay all of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, uh, so, the question is, now that we're here, uh, how do we want to enter? Cause, I mean, I imagine that all the abjuration magic from any of the doors are going to alert it also us. Sounds like, it sounds like there isn't going to be a way... As we get in there without making noise, so do we just say fuck it and just go? There's one one of one of them and five of us. We just go with an element of surprise. Uh, give me hey. one moment. Stick to the plan. Uh, that balcony on the back, Sean. Mm -hmm. That's there's no way to get up there, right? Like, um, really? the you mean the the back balcony the second floor second floor balcony, yes. um, like from the ground level. Right. Um, yeah, no, it would require like a ladder to be put down or a rope right. or something. Okay, so Jacquette is going to move towards it and point down um, and then go, it's probably not locked if you can't get to it. Right? And then he's going to shimmy down to the balcony. Okay, um, so there you when you look over the edge, there are two balconies. There's a balcony to the room immediately below you, and a balcony in the room oh. in front of you. Just drop immediately down. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do a Wait. quick adjustment of the map so you can see better. Okay. The back. Okay. Okay. Whoa! I feel like the world is spinning beneath our feet. Uh oh. Is this Inception? <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow.
Okay, is that helpful? Yes. Yes, thank yep. you very much. All right, so Jacquette, you're going to drop down to the um, balcony right below the terrace here. All right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me a stealth check. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, one second. Uh, so the first thing you notice, Jacquette, though, before I resolve the stealth, is um, it is uh, the door of this balcony is blocked by debris. Like in the way Bruce described that room, having everything pushed up against the walls. Basically, it's it's um, there's you know, a, a tipped over uh, a duvet or, or, or a cabinet or something that is just blocking that door from being opened. But they open outward. So you can get in. It's just you'll have to crawl through detritus. Um, and as far as you can tell, there's no stirring inside. All right, gonna crawl over to the other balcony. See if there's an easier way in. Yeah. Okay. Um, so same thing. Those doors open outward, um, uh, and you can kind of crawl over to the edge and take a look. Um, do you want to give me just a general perception check to see what what you can see and what activity there is? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Um, so uh, you can still see that candlelight. Um, and when you peek, peek in, it looks as though, um, you can see that the person's back is to you. You can see them now through the, um, doors because they're not like, they're like glass doors. Um, mm -hmm. and you can see that they are working at a station, uh, against the wall opposite from where you're looking, uh, and their back is turned. All right. Uh, Jacquette's gonna lean up to go up to the roof and he's gonna point down motion them to come as he's gonna go down to the door and start to open it as the other ones join him so everyone else is going to carefully step down to the balcony you're at and you're going to the next balcony yeah as, yes. Soon, as, yes. as soon as we get the signal I'm down I want to stay close okay yeah. everyone give me stealth checks uh Fearn's nervous <laughs> yeah so am I <laughs> oh Jesus Okay. I got oh. It. Okay. Oh, uh, I have to roll a disadvantage, so that doesn't count. Uh, I got a nat one. Oh. I rolled a two and a one, by the way. Oh no. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nervous. Hell yeah. Uh, what did everyone get though? We're gonna be doing a a group check here. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh I'm sorry. So Bruce uh, Septimus, what did you get? Eight. Eight. Bruce, what'd you get? 18. Oh. Uh, Sass, what'd you get? 21. And then, uh, what is the total, though, for yours, um, Fearn? Uh, I think it's a two, but let me make sure. Mm -hmm. No, it's a three. No. Oh, okay. Okay, not so bad. <laughs> and, um, uh, Jacquette, what did you get? Oh, do you want another one? Yeah, I, yours I, is separate from theirs. Yours is just for once you actually get to that space. Um, 15. What was your original one? 14. Okay, then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with, with the new one then. Okay, Rolling so the one. average of all your rolls is 12 and a half, uh, not including uh, Jacquette. Um, and let's That's check their great. passive perception. Ooh, let's hope it's 11. Let's hope it's not a druid. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, I'm going to say that Bruce and Sass uh, help the other two step down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Bruce, you, job, you, you kind of like catch Septimus before he um, 
basically just sort of uh, like Septimus is un not used to this new armor he's wearing. Um, so it kind of throws his weight off and he kind of almost trips. Uh, he lands, but he almost comp like just drops to the ground because he he's not used to it. Um, and uh, Sass, you um, Sass, you you get a bloody lip as you you keep uh, fearing from completely hitting the ground as it's just sort of like an, an elbow goes right into your lip and you bite and it's just you every if hold everything in you not to scream about it. Um, but you're able to get fear and down oh, semi quietly, like quite. You might hesitate for a moment as you hear fear and's boots hit the ground, but it looks as though the person is too um, too thoroughly invested in their work. As you sneak to that other one, what does the person look like? They have yeah. glasses, short brown hair has these weird white things in their ears that connect <laughs> wearing a blue what looks to be like a sweater mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> devilishly handsome <laughs> one might say um it is certainly tight in on that balcony with the four of you on it um <laughs> <laughs> uh but um uh septimus you can make your way closer to where uh um jacquette is and take a look to see the person Right now, you can't see their face. Um, you can see that they are wearing um, like a dark red uh, uh, shawl cloak. Um, and then they have um, streak, uh, streaky uh, white and blonde hair um, they, that looks uh, older. Like they, they don't look like a young person. They, their hair looks, has that kind of frazzled look of, a, mm. of an elderly person. Okay. Um, I don't just like look to Jaquette and I kind of just like give him a, like a shrug. Like, what do we do? Just uh, mouthing. What so do you? Do? What do we do? Jaquette's gonna <clears throat> go and try to open the balcony door very slowly and carefully. Person is so entranced in whatever they're doing and now that you're up there you can see like the hooded lantern that they have that's very mm -hmm. much so just trying to provide light to their desk um doors open and, and they are at least for this moment um unaware but i will say jaquette just because of your experience with sneaking around it's not going to take long before the breeze hits hits them right. and realize that the door's uh, been opened Jacquette quickly motions to the ones he draws out his hand crossbow, takes out a dagger, goes in, aiming at the person, uh, and I'm going to have uh, dis dissonant whispers prepared to cast if they try to do anything. Um, but he's kind of hoping that the rest of the party can file in uh, and also bear their arms. Uh, the intent here is to be like, Put your hands up. You're surrounded. Um, Septimus will grab his hammer and follow through quickly. All right. So we have uh, Septimus following. Um, the rest of you, are you just going to follow after Septimus one after another? Uh, Bruce is going to be the last one to go in <laughs> and just be like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so when, uh, when Jaquette points his gun and like waves to Fearn, uh, he, uh, he takes that wave as mission accomplished. So I'm going to throw caution to the wind and just start running towards this person full speed. Uh, so, I mean, Jaquette, you'll have mo more time in there before he can just, he has to leap over the, uh, mm -hmm. balconies. So basically, mm -hmm. Jaquette, you, you step in and you're quietly approaching, crossbow pulled, uh, and you wave them in. Fear, and you have to wait for Septimus to crawl over again. And then Septimus, as you crawl over, you hear, and all of you hear Fear and just like, like, like leaping over the trench uh, uh, into the room and just 
the loud clanging of his armor as he stands there uh, um, in this this space. Uh, I'm assuming you grabbed your greatsword at some point today. Yeah, it's it was in. The, remember, I left it in the abandoned house, and I was sitting there waiting for a long time. So it's back with me. Okay, so you would have recalled it while you then. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Um, I think as soon as I hear Fearn crash land and that noise is made, uh, I'm going to cast invisibility on myself. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, and with the loud crash of Fjern, Jacquette goes, oh, don't move, we have you surrounded. Um, and yeah, the person did immediately turn around, like as soon, mm -hmm. uh, of course, as soon as they hear that, sorry, I'm just rolling something for them. Um, they see you, and you can see this is an old woman, completely inconspicuous in, in her look. You wouldn't suspect her of any dealings or anything. She has pale, pale skin, uh, very, um, very uh, bloodshot eyes, almost uh, al albino in appearance. Um, and uh, you know, she doesn't look un she doesn't look frail. She's just older. She's probably in her her late sixties, early seventies. Um, and you can see that there are potions all over the place behind her. Um, you look to your left and you can see there is a station for uh, working with uh, mechanical uh, objects. Um, this place uh, is warm. Like as soon as you step inside, it's warmer than it is outside and it's a summer night. So you're walking into uh, like a room that's like high 70s in temperature while outside was in the high 60s an immediate 10 10 degree jump when you walk in and she even has a little bit of sweat on her skin as she just holds her hands up as soon as you say you're surrounded and just kind of has this little smile on her face back away from the, the the desk slowly well you want me to back away or should i turn around and back away from the desk Slide your seat out slowly no, to no, the no, middle come. of the room. Jacquette's going to start circling around to the side and goes, Come into the center of the room. Who are you? Identify yourself. And she slowly, the stool is, is moving, um, <clears throat> uh, scraping against the ground. Uh, give me perception checks. Everyone? Uh, yes. Fifteen. Fifteen as well. Oh, sixteen, right. sorry. Fifteen. I was looking at well. <laughs> uh, So everyone got uh did anyone get higher than a twenty two? Oh. Nah. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, she seems to be complying, <laughs> um, as oh, she, she, uh, pushes out into the middle of the room, and her stool is on wheels, so it's scraping against the ground, but she's coming out, basically scooching, um, her hands are slowly coming down, though, as she comes to the middle of the room. Since I went invisible, I want to approach closer and see what I can see, if she, what she was working on. Yeah, absolutely, give me an investigation check. Uh, while you're doing that and sneaking by, what do the rest of you want to do? As she's she's in the middle of the room now, um, her hands are no longer up though. She's got them on her lap. Ja Jacques goes, "No, keep your hands up." Who, is Who that are you? you? What's your connect connection to Otto Hastings? I don't know an Otto Hastings. Why are you breaking into my house and threatening me? Because we want to. Now answer the fucking question. How are you connected to Otto Hastings? We I know this is his property. It. No, no, you're lying to us. Trust me, I'm a liar. I would know these things. And you know what they do to liars, he says. And at this, I want to check what her reaction is when I say that. Give me an insight check. Mm. Nice. So close to a nat 20. It's a 14. Um. Oh. 
Uh, you, it's she's hard to read right now. She's putting on. You can tell. I would say it's not that you get nothing. It's that you can tell she's putting on this sort of I, right. ant- antagonistic brave face. Okay, uh, Bruce. I imagine is in, in the back, just observing, yep. like hiding behind something. <laughs> um, imagine you're like on the balcony, looking in from the door. Yes. Uh, can I make an inside check too? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, never mind. Just a seventeen. I mean, anyone can, other than uh, Sass, who's doing something else. Why not? I got a four. DC's an 18. <laughs> da, 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 dog pot. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Fearn is going to get closer to her and basically try and stand in between her and the desk she was working on. Mm-hmm. So I imagine this is happening as you say what you say, um, Jacquette. So it's like she is now cut off and completely surrounded. Um, right. uh, Jacquette, could you give me a, a persuasion roll? Uh, there. What was it? Uh, it's the 12, but that's actually going to be a 17. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's right, because you got your, your special feature. Yeah. 17, okay. <clears throat> um even though you can't really read her reaction she does kind of uh she returns to complying as soon as you threaten her and as soon as you mention uh the liar like even though you can't really read much about her reaction to that and as far as if she knows anything about that you can at least tell she understands violence um mm-hmm. in this moment uh and she looks, her eyes almost cross as they look at the crossbow in front of her. She goes, Do you remind me of the question that you asked? I'm sorry, I am a little flustered with a weapon pointed in my face. Oh, my apologies, he says as he's, like, not pushing it into her, but, like, the, the crossbow bolt is starting to line up with her forehead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he goes, Who are you? And what is your connection with Otto Hastings, who we know owns this property? Uh, Well, you see, I am Professor Ferrix, Professor Sindel Ferrix, the Academy. And I suppose this Mr. Hastings you talk about is uh, my landlord. Oh, yes. When was the last time you paid rent? Oh, well, I haven't. uh, First of every month, so just over a week ago. Okay, uh, and at this, uh, Jacques kind of looks up at Fjern and makes a little like face, and then he goes, "And uh, how exactly do you pay your rent?" What are you tax collectors? Are you here just to ask me financial questions at Crossbow Bolt? While this is happening, Fjern is looking like he, he's basically got his weapon out in front of him, but he's like taking quick glances behind him uh, at whatever this person was working on just to see if there's like any papers or, you know, weaponry or things that are on the desk that might help with this interrogation. Uh, at the exact same time, Sass, what was your investigation check? Six. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. going to tell you what you see. You just don't really know what it is. I mean, there, sure. y- you're not blind. You know, uh, you see yeah, um, a <laughs> uh, bunch of metal contraptions, uh, oh, vi- no. vials. Um, <laughs> um, there's uh, um, a lot of potions there, stoppered potions. Like there's like, and they're not well kept. They're not like in nice little like beakers or in little stands there's just like a pile of potions um uh there they almost to the point that it's like anyone who's like like uh would be organ like deep into organization would be very upset <laughs> physically repulsed by it because it's glass <laughs> in a pile basically uh, filled with liquids um a variety of colors some of them having fl- very very faint glows to them 
Um, that's what you see. Uh, you can't really tell much about it. There, I mean, there is notes there. There's yeah. papers there, but uh, in fear, and you would see keep... the same thing. While while they're talking to her, I'm gonna keep walking and see if I can, if there's, if I can find anything with his name on it or anything that uh, might connect to. Give me another investigation check. Uh, I want to take this Professor Sindel's hands and begin to, like, hold them behind his back. Basically, like, her her back, sorry. Am I being detained? Are you working for the Commodore's office? (laughs) Well, working for whoever will make you answer my questions truthfully. What are you doing here? Who is that that you work for? Oh, you know, the great goddess in the sky. Ah, psh, psh. Moon worshiper. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Answer the fucking question. Uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, can you remind me what your persuasion role was before? I know that was for the previous seven question, but I'll carry it over for this. Um, unless you want to try again. I can't get worse. That's true. That yeah. That's like me saying, "Do you want to keep your one?" <laughs> yeah. Wow. Seventeen. Wow. Okay. But like actually, um, it doesn't actually. It's not because I'm using the feature. It just is a natural like 10 seventeen. Plus seven. <laughs> uh, um, and and Sean, once I've got her like properly, uh, you know, restrained, I'm just gonna pat her down and make sure that there's no weapons or anything in her pockets. Not, like, stealing it, but, like, checking. Give me an investigation check. Okay. Um, Septimus and Bruce, what are you doing while while they're pulling this woman's hands behind her back and Sass has disappeared? He's kind of just, like, very uncomfortable at this moment. (laughs) Like, oh, my God, what is happening? (laughs) This, This poor woman, what have we done? Yeah. Uh, Bruce is exactly the same way, but also Bruce is like, well, is she doing something wrong? Like, what, what does she have on the table? And so Bruce is going to be looking at the artifacts or on the table in addition to the potions. Not that he'll be able to <laughs> and Seth just keeps on like opening up his mouth, but like not saying anything because he wants to be like, we did, what, what have we done? But like just letting it like play out because he doesn't want to fuck anything more up. <laughs> Uh, if Bruce moves towards the, the, the desk and says those things, she would immediately, like, as she's staring at um, Jacquette, you, you would notice her eyes immediately dart, and she would just say, Don't touch that! Don't touch anything on that table. Oh, why not? Because it's important to you? You don't know what you're meddling with, with those... With the... <sighs> sure, I do. At this, uh, Jacquette kind of like squats down to be like eye level with her and be like, So explain to us, what are they? What are you doing here? And I'll say this is the same time of Bruce or uh, Septimus or um, Fearn. Oh my god, I went through all of you. Uh, <laughs> Fearn, um, uh, uh, does his, his pat down. What did you get in the investigation check? I got an eight. Okay, Fearn, you start to pat down kind of like where the shawl is and looking for any weapons at the waist and everything. Um, And um, Uh, you feel an intense pain as something bites down on your hand. Uh, And you feel as if a... uh, as if a bear trap has closed down on your hand. Um, as you pull, as, as fear, uh, you know, you can react how you react with this as far as like uh, screams or pains or anything like that. But so you. I didn't like reach into her pockets. I was patting her down. And she has I a shawl was... on. It's just your hands were near where something was. It's not, this isn't. It, okay. This is not like, like she but, attacked you so... or there was a trap. Something bit you, like came out of the shawl and bit you. Okay, but do I see the thing or? Yes, I'm about to get to that. Okay, <laughs> uh, I just have to roll damage. Um, of course, gotcha. Because it's also out, and it got a nat twenty. 
<gasps> oh. Um, you take twenty-five points of piercing damage. Um, oh my god! Uh, Ouch! As uh, Fearn pulls his hand back, and there is uh, essentially um, a mechanical creature that is bit down on his hand. Um, for all intents and purposes, from your perspectives, it looks like the shape of a crab. Um, but if the crab was like the entire center of the crab was a bear trap uh, that came down, clamping down on his hand and wrist to the point where it cut into veins. That's why it's dealing so much damage and Fearn is bleeding profusely um, as he pulls this away and has little scuttling legs. It is very small, but big enough to uh, uh, basically grapple around the hand as Fearn, this thing bites into you. How do you react as blood splatters um, across Jaquette's face? Uh, I pull my hand back as hard as I can and try and smash this thing on the ground with all my might. Absolutely. Go ahead and give me an attack roll. Um, just generally, what is everyone's reaction here in this, like, couple of seconds here? What, what is you, what are you asking? Screaming. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did have Dissonant Whispers prepared should anything happen. So, I think Jacquette's going to cast Dissonant Whispers on her. Okay. I uh, had moved further into the room uh, to, to to keep looking around, um, and my investigation was a 16, but I w nobody would see it, but I would have turned around at the noise. Um, anyone looking would actually like see for a moment, just a brief moment, like the, the blood splatter hit Sass and then vanish, disappear with mm -hmm. her, her spell. Um, uh, what... Mm -hmm. Uh, and so additionally, uh, yes. if you'll allow it, which mm -hmm. if you don't, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to be using unsettling words right before it goes off to subtract a d6 from uh, her saving throw. What kind of action is unsettling words? Reaction? It's bonus action. Bonus action. So if not, or uh, I mean, what I want. Uh, so it's sorry. If I may make a case, which I didn't do it yeah, before, right. so if you don't want to, it's basically the opposite of bardic inspiration, right? Uh, yeah. Which lasts for ten minutes. So like during this whole time. Oh yeah, I'll. I mean, I could basically be unsettling with my words. Yeah. So that I mean, any. I'll allow she has that. To make. I'm just going to require you to declare yes. that more more uh, forwardly, because uh, that that makes sense to me for this situation. You were. Trying to intimidate her, it totally makes sense for you to use that ability on her. Because it, it's a debuff for 10 minutes, right? Yes. Okay. Is there any roll for it, or is it just straight up? Uh, it's just a minus d6 on the next saving throw. Okay, uh, so make. that might help you significantly here. Um, I did give her disadvantage on the saving throw because she oh, was, didn't know you were casting it. Um, what, it. What kind of saving throw is it? Wisdom, dc13. Okay, um, I'm going to ask you to roll the d6. Um, yeah. just, just, she did get a, um, uh, Four. W w I'm sorry. What was it? It was wisdom. Yes. Wisdom 13 minus four from the roll. Oh, just enough. Wait, four, right? Wait. Yes. So she rolled a 15 and got, and has plus one. Okay. Yeah. So that is just enough. Yeah. That brings her down to 12. <clears throat> so. Go ahead and roll damage and tell me what you what your Dissonant Whisperer's effect is. So she takes 12 points of psychic damage and wants, if available, or if able, uh, move as far away from me as possible. Okay. Uh, so not moving right. into obviously dangerous ground. Uh, I just want to clarify. I was, I had her hands behind her back. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I tied her up at that moment, but I definitely had her hands held behind her back. So she is like kind of technically being grappled by me. Okay. Um, uh, and this thing is grappling my hand, I'm assuming, as well. <laughs> yes. Yes, basically. It's covering your whole hand. You can't use that hand while it's grappled onto it. Um, so I am going to ask for a, a grapple check in this moment, Fearn. Okay. Um, just because uh, she would be trying to move away. Um, so let me just see something real quick. Sorry. 
There it is. Crap. Okay. <clears throat> what do you need? I think you're fine. Yep. You only need one free hand for a grapple. Uh, so go ahead and give me an athletics or acrobatics check. Athletics or acrobatics? She rolled a um, 17 on her um, acrobatics to slip out. Well, I rolled a 10 because I can't roll higher than a 3 today. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so she does twist her hand out of your grapple while you're smashing this thing on the ground. Um, I'm not even really going to ask you to give a roll for the actually for the smashing the thing because it is attached to your hand, so you can pretty easily smash it into the ground. Um, it's not very strong once you've actually smashed it into the ground. I'll say, it, it, you know, it takes a moment to do that, but it does break off of your hand um, as soon as you hit it to the ground. Um, and she does slip away, uh, and she does start running. Um, basically directly for the, uh, um, stairs. Um, and she's running down the stairs. So what would you all like to do at this point? I know this is getting a little, a little chaotic here, but let's, let's just trip maybe roll up. Is she running towards me? Um, where did you say you were? Because I was, I wanted to walk past, mm -hmm. past her. So if towards the other workstations and stuff that were behind her because mm -hmm. um, I was looking for any anything that was significant or maybe relating to Hastings um, and then if she's uh, if she's running that direction I I'm, she won't see me so I'll try and trip her so if you you can try to trip her she's not running towards you but it wouldn't be hard for okay. you to, to get towards the direction she's running to try to trip her Mm -hmm. um, okay, so then I, I would have heard, I would have heard that smack of the of the crab, mm -hmm. and then I would have turned around and stopped looking. Um, I rolled a sixteen, so I don't know if I found anything. But then, then seeing her trying to run, I would go and try and intercept. All right, um, just give me an attack roll, like, a, like an improvised weapon attack roll. Okay. Would that be like an unarmed strike? Correct. Oh, six. Okay, so you don't quite get get to her to trip her. That's all right. She, does... she still doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> yeah. uh, and she does run for the stairs. Uh, she has to use her full movement, right? Too quiet. Or is it just use to move as far as its speed allows? Okay. Uh, Sean, could I have gotten an attack of opportunity when she ran away from my threat? Area? Uh, no. Because you were dealing with the crap. Um, <laughs> uh, this is all happening at the same time. I know we're not in an initiative, but basically, crab bitch you. You cast dissonant whispers. You try to trip her. Bruce and and and, and uh, Septimus scream. Um, <laughs> well, Sept gotcha. I didn't know Septimus. You didn't say you scream, but you're probably. I don't out. scream, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bruce screams, uh, and then and then basically, I'm gonna say, now we'll go into an initiative order if there's anything like because she's disengaged from you but you still have like your weapons and stuff so let's do an actual initiative for for this now that was let me actually use the dice tray okay. this is beautiful beautiful right. chaos uh <laughs> uh 20 to 25 20 okay uh, fifteen and nineteen. Nineteen for nineteen as well. Uh, you can either uh decide. You can go your... first. You can go first. No, you can go. First. No, I want to go first. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> you're gonna do nothing. Coward. Uh, and he hasn't then... done anything wrong. <laughs> Septimus is not gonna just beat a random old woman. Ten to fifteen. Uh, I got uh. 14. Okay. And then, uh, Bruce, what'd you get? Two. <laughs> Two. Okay. Um, so, uh, Fear, and what's your, um, dexterity modifier? Uh, my dex plus two. All right. Fear, and roll again. Sure. She got a 14. I love a roll off. Uh, she got a nine on the roll off, so if you beat I that, like you're waffles. good. I like ruffles. I got a three. <laughs> okay, so she'll go before you. Woof. I can't roll higher than a three today, except for that one roll. Yeah, oh my gosh. Uh, 
All right, Sass, you are up first. Let me put everyone down where they actually are here. It's off here. So she's run down the stairs. She's on the first floor now. Um, <clears throat> so, Sass, uh, you're up first. Do you want to chase after her? Yeah, and I'm just reading the invisibility spell again. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably visible now because oh, yeah, I attacked. You, yeah, uh, or, I would say, yeah, you're visible now yeah. with the, the trip attempt. Yeah, so I, <laughs> since I rolled a six, I'm going to say that I tripped myself. <laughs> and so I'm <laughs> sprawled out on the floor okay, and just okay. visible again. And then, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just like hit the ground with both hands in frustration and I'm gonna summon my packed weapon. Okay. Um, and so with a spray of seawater, my cutlass shows up in my hand uh, and then I'll just like scramble up and I will chase after her. Okay. down the stairs and you can see she's in that next room just into that mm -hmm. next room so that's a okay. small little um door that she, cr okay. she goes through mm -hmm. um okay. it looks like a crawl but it's actually a normal door it's, it's she's, door, she's yeah. just on the other side of the door um <clears throat> it is open what is she doing uh she this is as far as she ran with her movement speed um she's currently uh uh she's a she's as this is all happening at once, she's still moving. She's like Yukara as she walked into this room. She's about mm -hmm. to do something in there. You can't tell what. Okay. And that's as far as I can get? Um, that was with your um, 30 feet that's of movement. movement. Um, and I already so, used my action to summon my, my sword. Yeah. So she's she's about 10 feet away from you, I would say. Okay. Um, then can I... Check what you're on deck. Uh, nope. Yeah, okay. So I want to, for my bonus action, uh, Tentacles of the Deep. I'd like to summon my tentacle and I can see the space right in front of her. Um, so I want to, because I can uh, summon it uh, to a point I can see within 60 feet of me. So I want to uh, cast it right in front of her and just say, we just want to talk. Okay, give me a persuasion roll or intimidation roll with that. As uh, a giant tentacle rides up into thing. this room. 19 persuasion. 19 persuasion. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, and it's I can attack. But I don't want to attack her. I think I want to make it like smack the ground next to her. Oh, sure. Easily, yeah. You can use the attack to do that. Have it almost like she's running and it smacks in front of where Smack. she was running. Yeah, just, just, yeah. yeah, just, just want to talk. So she does look back to you um, with not understanding in her eyes suddenly, but more uh -huh. so she looks back and she's just sort of like, you can tell she's trying to think about, she's uh, going through everything in her head. Sure. Can I escape? Should I talk yep. to them? That kind of thing. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, so we're only going to go through one round of this. Uh, since it's almost 10 o'clock. Um, Jaquette. Um, uh, Septimus is on deck. Rem you said that there's windows or bars across all the windows on the first floor. Correct. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, Jaquette, as he readies to chase after uh, the woman and... Sass turns to Bruce and Septimus and goes, if you're not going to fight, at least figure out what's going on here. 
And then he's going to feline agility, mm -hmm. um, giving me 60 feet uh, movement speed. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, be able to, to get to her. To move down uh, up to her. Uh, so am I engaged with her? Yes. All right, and then um, just uh, you know, uh, holding the crossbow and the dagger up, and goes, "There's nowhere to run. We don't want to kill you until you've given us what we want." <laughs> no, he just says, "There's nowhere to run." Yeah. Um, okay. Um, and yes, do I have a anything that I can actually do. Yeah, and then I cast the Unseen Servant. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Rose um, Pierre grabs her. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to prepare uh, the attack action should she do anything besides, like, put her hands up. Oh, okay, uh, so you're holding submit. for an attack action. Yes. Excellent. Uh, Septimus, you are up. And then uh, the she is on deck, uh, and then Fear and Bruce. So Septimus, um, what do you want to do? You're muted. You said that there was like a hole that goes down to the first floor. Yep. Where is that? At? So the hole is uh, here. That's where the other apartment. That's is that where like the other apartment? Where was she working originally? Uh, the room you're in currently. And then, including the room where the hole was. Uh, it's kind of one long room. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, I guess feasibly you all could have jumped down that hole to get in front of her. Um, uh, so, I mean, Jacquette, if you'd wanted to. Nope, Jacquette saw where she went and chased because cool. I don't think he would know necessarily. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, Septimus, you look around, you can see she was working at the two tables that I have chests there representing. Oh, okay. Um, that was, that was and then cool. there's where there's no hole. There is a hole in the in the far uh, wooden room there. Uh, is there any other like tables of like paper scattered around over there? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's papers and stuff scattered all over that table, and mechanical oh. devices and potions and other tools. Well, not where she was working because I saw that Fiern was already taking a look over there. Oh, okay. Um, I was like, wondering if there was anywhere else noticeable. Uh, you can see through. Um, it's hard to look at it on here because everything's disassembled, but the. You can see there's a bedroom um, on the top uh, left, uh, right there. Um, oh. So, yeah. So the wooden uh, that's now on the ground is the second floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I would go in there. I'd use my movement to go in there, and my action would just be investigate to see if I see anything um, relating to... Um, what's the guy's name? Hastings. Hastings, sorry. Yeah, it's no problem. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. Like, oh, um, please. Uh, 23. 23. As I'm like rifling through papers, I'm like, oh, please tell me we're not wrong. Please tell me something here. <laughs> um, I will resolve that in a moment. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jacquette, on her, her turn, she, you notice she doesn't freeze. She actually reaches into her shawl and pulls out a potion. So if you want to go right, for cool. an attack. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to make two attacks with the dagger because I'm engaged with her. Oh, for no, it. just one. Sorry. I don't get multi attack. Uh, 23 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. All right. Six points of piercing damage. OK. All right. <clears throat> um, she is going to drink that potion. It's going to be invisibility. I'm rolling for it. Hold on. <laughs> <clears throat> meow, meow, meow. 
Um, mm -hmm. Okay. She immediately starts breathing fire. Oh no! Oh. Um. <clears throat> so Jaquette, I need you to give me a, a DC 13 dexterity saving throw. Eighteen. Okay, you pass. So you're gonna take half damage. Uh, is that seven fire damage half to uh, three? Uh, she rolled three ones on that. <laughs> um, uh, as she just sort of like expels this uh, um, globular ball of fire at you, ah! and it just p misses you and fringes and burns your fur a little bit. Um, <clears throat> as Sass, you see a fire, a little tiny fire globule ball goes out from that room and like hits the wall behind you. It's stone, so it doesn't burn up. Um, Okay, um, Fearn and then Bruce. How far away is she? Uh, she's about, um, she's 40 feet away um, from where you are upstairs. Even if I take the shortcut down the hole? No, if you take the shortcut, then you can jump down and land right on the other side of her. Okay, I'm going to jump down onto her. And do a wrestling move and tackle her to the ground. Okay. Um, so are you attacking her or are you trying to do like a drop down grapple? Uh, I'd say it's kind of a little bit of both. Like I, I would say, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it would be a grapple. Like I'm trying to land on top of her and grapple yeah. her. So it would be the sort of thing where I'm knocking her prone and like basically grabbing her arms, pinning her to the ground. Okay, so go ahead and give me an athletics or acrobatics check. She did not roll well, so you just have to beat a f Hey, I rolled something good. I got a 22. You grab onto her. You've grappled her. Um, and I'm going to use my bonus action, and I'm going to non-lethally headbutt her in the face. Okay, go for it. Go for the attack roll. <laughs> you, you accidentally pierce her with your horns. <laughs> they go up. They don't go forward. Don't worry. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Although she might get like the stump of the horn. That that's probably like some brass knuckle type scenario. It's hard. Um. All right. Uh. Unarmed strike. Does a fifteen hit? Uh, yes. Cool. I do six bludgeoning damage. Okay. To her dome. All right, how do you want to knock... How, what does it look like when you knock her out? <laughs> uh, exactly how I said. Uh, basically, I... Uh, like, I'm getting up, and my hand's, like, basically, like, spewing blood, and I'm just like, That's bullshit! I hate me- uh, I hate mechs! And I, like, kick off the- the ground sprinting, jump over into the hole, and mm. I just, like, basically my hand's bloody, and I have my elbow out, and I just, like, elbow into her, and, she, like, she collapses onto the ground, and then I- uh, grab her shoulder with my good hand, and I just lean back and smash right it head to head. Uh, concussion, and she like bounces against the floor. And as I like slowly sit on top of her, and like my hands like bleeding at my side, and my other hands like up in the air, like fist pumping, looking <laughs> back at my friends. <laughs> uh, Fear and give me a quick dexterity saving throw. Oh god. <laughs> okay. You gotta get bit by a second mech. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I got a 13. Uh, okay, that just makes it so you only take half damage. Okay, so that's 13 half to 6 um, piercing. Or, I'm sorry, fire damage. Okay, I'm still up. 
somehow. Okay, so basically, basically as Fearn... oh, it's it's fire though, so I get half of it. Again, uh, yeah, yeah. So basically, as Fearn uh, jumps down uh, and tackles this woman, um, she uh, she belches out the last of the, the fire of the potion as she goes unconscious. Okay. So it just sort of like this like globule fire shoots out up towards Fearn's face, but he's able to easily enough um, keep it from hurting him too much. Um, I, I think having the ash, like the smoke on my face of like the, of the burning skin, just makes me th that just makes me happier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so with that, uh, we are out of initiative because she is unconscious. Um, just for the hell of it, uh, Bruce, what, what 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 were you doing during that? Uh, he was panicking, looking at uh, Septimus, like, what do we do? What do we do? Uh, and seeing that Septimus is frantically looking through the papers and stuff like that, uh, Bruce will be frantically looking through all the items that are on the table. The potions, the yeah. artifacts, the... Bruce, yeah. give me an investigation yeah, but... check. Oh. Okay. Wow. Another 28. Holy shit. Um, Hell yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, Bruce, with just such a vast role. Um, <laughs> uh, so, Septimus, in the back room, you do find some of this, uh, what you presume are this woman's uh, personal effects. The bed is um, perfectly made. Like, it doesn't look like she's been sleeping on it. Um, uh, there <laughs> are um, just some plates of old food, and there is a... Um, uh, uh, a bag there, basically like her personal bag um, that you can grab and look through. Um, <clears throat> you can find that she does have some notes in there and you kind of can scramble through those. Um, uh, Bruce, you uh, mainly find these things she's been tinkering with. Um, and given your background, um, you can immediately sort of uh, not necessarily identify what they do, but you can tell based on the devices that these are in some way elementally infused tink, uh, inventions. Um, you can see like the biggest one um, is on the table and like for lack of a better way to put it, it looks like a landmine, um, but it has this sort of vial on the top of it. And you can just see this swirling, swirling um, uh, magical water side of it um it's likely a bound elemental uh while inside uh septimus you are able to find what you presume are some correspondence letters um and you don't read the contents yet but you do find hastings name on some of them you did not just beat up a a old woman in her house who just likes to mess around with with tinkering. <laughs> <laughs> she is not. I saw, I saw this just has a, it just has a sigh of relief, like because like he hasn't come across so many people that like lie so instinctually, which is like I know nothing what you're talking about. It's like oh shit, okay. Absolutely. So as the adrenaline slows in the trio downstairs and the two upstairs adrenaline probably stays at a steady pace um but they have discovered that this woman was not so innocently here she was working on some dangerous technology as well as did have correspondence with hastings that was not just a rent payment in the mail um and i think that's uh where we'll end it for tonight um thank you everyone Ooh. for joining us i hope you guys had fun um, <clears throat> I was like touch and go there. I'm like, all right, they're either jumping in here to to fight immediately and and attack this woman, or we're gonna have a prolonged sort of uh, in encounter. Um, but I was very very pleasing to watch you all kind of slowly figure things out and and what you want to do to deal with this old woman. <laughs> um, damn, when you put it that way, <laughs> I'm sorry, Sean, this but... nefarious old woman. <laughs> she, uh, her her one attack to me did more damage than all of those raccoons so i i have no sympathy 
No, I, I, I fully, I don't judge how Fear reacted. I mean, it was kind of like a one and done trap situation when that thing bit you. Um, it wasn't mm. able to do much else after that except keep your hand unoccupied. Um, all right, so we are going to send our raid on over to Girls Run the These Worlds. Um, so go ahead and give them uh, our love. I don't know what TTRPG they're playing, but they are playing um, something. Uh, so go ahead and uh, say hello from Paradise. Um, we'll join us again uh, next week, 6.30, uh, for... Uh, what the, they do with this unconscious woman and her her inventions. Um, uh, the Power Hour on Sunday, where Shannon and I will discuss this. Shannon's had a pretty good run of her grades recently for her mm-hmm. recaps. Um, so we'll see uh, we'll see how this one goes. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that's all for us tonight. Please join us in Paradise um, and keep an eye out on socials for other programming from us. Uh, and yeah. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Have a good night. Say good night, everybody. You too. Bye. Bye.